and I am joined by Ben the Quest Giver. Hello and greetings. It is good to see you all. I do see you, so please stop doing that. By Sean. No, keep doing that. <laughs> no, stop doing Hello. that. Hello. No, no, no. higher, <laughs> higher. No, 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 no. To the left. To the left. No, no, no. <laughs> Take it back now, yo. <laughs> and by special guest council member, Sean. Hello. And, and no, not I, I love your little... Everything. The bit you have on the back wall is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you look so much more professional than the rest of us. <laughs> I have a weapon wall. The axes well, are not back saying, up yet. You're, <laughs> you're saying that I'm not professional with my with work trousers. <laughs> I've, I've got the the wedding invite from the first Christmas crossover special. <laughs> I've got whatever the hell's These are my here. boxes of walls. The <laughs> yeah. stuff over here. I know, a terrarium thing. I've my got, weapon wall. I've got and the spell box jam box sign. <laughs> I, should and up, I should update the spell jam sign now. Actually, this is the the academy sign needs to go, and we need to upgrade that to something else. I have things I've been slowly working on. Uh, <laughs> I've decided yeah. what, for the sake of the next time, I've even found so far, this is going to be the adopter mimic sign. <laughs> <laughs> my my evil genius at work sign has fallen down. I no, like which I you're not just person. a regular genius at work. So, behind me, so uh, here's, a, here's a fuggle with some pants. Double pants. Uh, Fabulous pants. I, I have a fishy which I'm going to eat. Uh, we are <laughs> here to apparently discuss the things that are behind us. Yep. Uh, Not just behind us, John. In front of us as well. I, I do have some bookkeeping things that I have to run through uh, because while we were doing the trailer loop, Pendragon Nomad resubscribed for 32 months in a row. Welcome back hey. to the FBF Knights. I shall continue to keep attached to this place. Ah! ah. <laughs> said, said they. <laughs> and Ben the Quest Giver said, Yo-ho! What do we know? It's time to... It's time again, so let's go. It feels like it's been too long since I've taken over here and given John a song. Let's see if we can get this stream demonetized by getting John to hypnotize. Don't believe the lies hidden behind the ties, in under the cries, and listening to the tie years. <laughs> you get banned for the terrible last line. <laughs> I know we'll wrap back to reality and get John to do a rendition of Eminem. Ooh, chocolate. Ooh, we will. Uh, I knew I oh no, that was not meant to say. Oh God. I'm sorry. Uh, How does chocolate race anyway? <laughs> that was meant to be rap. I don't know why I've gone and quit. <laughs> exactly what it's written. You really are ready for the demonetization. How I'm does sorry. chocolate do either of those things? That was not the aim. Jeez. <laughs> those hard little little hard shells don't have and mouths or anything. Oh no, I've run o. <laughs> <laughs> Now we need to quickly go through the chat so we can get rid of that little red part. <laughs> uh, how, how do you like this is what happens when I'm up, put on the spot. It's like, I, I, I have no time if I, to... keep, if I just keep replying to it, it will just keep coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't do that. I don't want to go and ask you how chocolate rapes. <laughs> I... So... Before we dive into the world building, last night I went to see the new uh, Spider-Man into the Into the Spider-Verse sequel across the Spider-Verse. Uh -huh. Foodman. And Foodman. If if you remember from the previous one, where they go into the different universe, they have different adverts on things. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like how in our universe. They are the New York Police Department, NYPD. Mm -hmm. And in the in the film, uh, Miles' dad works for the PDNY, the Police Department of New York. Mm -hmm. right. 
they had in the background of one of the shots in this film W and W chocolate uh, snacks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I got it. I got it. Which, which is is a good joke in the background. They're really like W and W is a lot harder to say. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Dub a dub. Anyway, that's uh, I mean that's some world building, I, I guess. But uh, there's not... some terrible side of things when it came down. So I had to send back yeah. the last pack of M and M's. So too many W's. <laughs> Uh, there's some world building, but not really the world building we're here to discuss. Uh, we are going to talk today about towns oh. and architecture. Architecture. That's um, why we've dragged Sean in kicking and screaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just been like dragged in. Yeah. Does this rag Format. smell of chloroform to you? <laughs> no, no. Right, it hang doesn't. on, hang on. <laughs> that sounds familiar. That's how they, you caught me last time. <laughs> um, no, it does not. You forgot to put it on there. Damn it! <laughs> but now you're you here. Get, are you, at least you guys get the soft rag. I just get elephant tranquilizers. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, we've got My some. Gun hurt. We've got some towns. <laughs> We've got Vectis yep. Haven, we've got Staros, we've got Stone's Grave, we've got Sunspire, Craven Wing, Lawfell, and Sanctuary Springs, as well as, if I bring up the notes, where do elves live? <laughs> where do elves live? And where do halflings live? Mm -hmm. We need to discuss... I would like us to discuss uh, on on this particular episode the the architecture, the general look of these places. And obviously, yep. Sean, you we discussed this a little bit earlier, but some of that is also going to be the environment of those places, the the general what is in the vicinity, what can be delivered to the town. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of detail that we can go into with <clears throat> what it means for each of these places to have the building types they have. Yeah. The general general theory from the architecture side of things for me is things have to make sense as to why they're there. So if you're in a cold place, you're going to have to deal with the snow. So you're going to have a steep roof. Um, if you're in a hot place, either perhaps you consider living underground um, or perhaps you look at whether you can um, have flat roofs, whether there are other shade structures you can put up. If you're in a heavily wooded area with trees that drop their leaves, you're also going to want steep roofs because you don't want leaves piling up on your roof. Um, you're going to use your standard stone type for your area for most of your standard utilitarian sort of buildings whereas you might have some stone that comes in from somewhere fancy for the big manor house so you can see just from surveying the town that that one stands out why does that one stand out what does it mean to stand out yeah, because that guy's got more money than sense and decided to ship wood in from the other side of the continent. I decided I wanted a palace made of ice in this desert. And, yeah, and wanted peasants digging out gemstones for all the door handles. So, I get 40 tons of ice delivered a day. <laughs> I've, I've got a fairly good idea mm -hmm. of what I want Vectis Haven to look like. Okay. So, shall we start discussing Vectis Haven? Yeah. Because I think there's there's um, Vectis Haven, Sunspire, Lawfell, and Sanctuary Springs are four places on the map that I have I have 
at least some idea of what I think they look like. And okay. they are four places that are in very different areas of the map. Yeah. So I think there's plenty of, of variation across those. I mean, obviously, we've discussed a little bit Staros, which is built from pirate ships sort of lashed together. Yeah. So that's very much not something we need to necessarily talk about here so much because we know what that's like they they are ships that are tied together and have been mounted up the sides of the cliff face um, that's cool and it, along the lines of you build with what's around they were people who had ships that may not have been seaworthy anymore but still were, you know, held together structurally enough to be yeah. a building. To be some quarters at the very least. Mm -hmm. So Vectis I mean, Haven. Okay. Let us start with Vectis Haven. And I, I've got Obsidian open so I can make some notes, whether that's in the note of Vectis Haven or whether that's in the note of so for for quick roundup of things that happened between the streams, this is the this this is Obsidian. I I put this together between the streams from the notes that we had made both in um, the Miller note and in the uh, other note taking app that we tried out using and. What I very much like about this note taking this this obsidian, it it connects your notes together, mm. and you can make this very nice graph <laughs> of this note, which is the construction of Fort Vigil, connects to this, which is the Gygaxian, this, which is the Fort <laughs> Vigil note, and this, which is the Temple of Gygaxian, and you can sort of very quickly see which notes go to where. Hey, Law. <laughs> Hello, Law. Uh, so, yes, we've... You can't tell us what to do, Law. We're going to be really boring now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's why I just can't be collecting... I don't know about... I, I mean, I was thinking about starting juggling. I, I, I don't know how to juggle, but I was going to think about starting anyway. <laughs> I mean, that would be amusing to watch yeah. you learn. <laughs> I would suggest a good starting thing to juggle is chainsaws. Mm. <laughs> I'm in trouble, aren't I? <laughs> or maybe axes on fire. Yeah, and then I can <laughs> chainsaws I, on fire. I can yes. also color the notes so that the li different bits of the different dots on the graph are nice and colorful and uh, sort of signify what the thing is. So. The light red ones <laughs> are the races, the yellows are locations, the deeper red ones are villainous characters. Um, oh, villainous. Oh, the blue oh, ones okay. are other characters who aren't necessarily villainous. And then the purple at the moment is the timeline events that we have discussed. Uh, and then these blue ones are deep. Deep blue is extra planar <clears throat> locations, areas that are outside of Tamranor's prime material. So we have the slumbering twilight and the garden of starless skies. Hmm. So how long oh. before it forms a brain that we can put into a robot? Uh, it's going to take a little <laughs> while. We need to get a few more connections <laughs> going. Oh, okay, then fair enough. But we'll we'll get there. Um, uh, all you do is say that I'm pretty sure there actually is such a thing out there. <laughs> it, I'm pretty it's sure there take is a little actually while for us to get that many connections, but <laughs> uh, diabetic fudge. Uh, in yeah. the world, put it in the world. <laughs> so Vectis Haven. Mm -hmm. It's a port town. It's on the coast. I'm picturing it being very grim, very gothic, 
it's got factory buildings that are very angular and very utilitarian. Mm -hmm. But it's also got some of the buildings that are like those, like the fancy churches and and yeah, gothic structures of dark stone. Mm. Well, cool. I, like I must have when it came down to my first initial thought. I don't know if you've watched the film called Klaus, the Christmas film. Yes. Yes. Mm. That was what I pretty much pictured uh, Vector's Haven to be similar to, but I do like, as you say, throwing in the whole gothic little side in there as well. Because it really does sort of pander to the the theme that you're trying to go for there. I... It's almost like you've got so mm. much a quickly huts made for the time being and then proper stone coming in later. Yeah, I I very much like the idea that the town itself has sort of a very a, a goth in in the 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 dark sense of gothic as well. Mm-hmm. Like everything is covered with either a layer of grime and coal dust and and industry stuff or is made from such a dark stone that it doesn't matter if you clean it off mm. because it is a dark grey or, or almost black stone. Uh, right. The, a very dull Yeah. Mm. Creates a that, very thematic like, scene. Of sorts. Yeah, yeah, so. What I was imagining is like, because you, we, we've mentioned a few times that it's going to be quite industrial, like mm. there, there will be a modicum of technology in this place to help with being a port town. Yeah. I was just I was just imagining like Victorian London. Oh yeah. That but, is very much but, but mm. more, but like exaggerated. Like so the buildings are taller and like the be like ridiculously thin ones. As you and... say it's sort of like a, a grotesque version which effectively a grotesque uh London would absolutely turn into effectively a gothic style. Mm. Yeah. Really. Like, in its exaggerations. Like, 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 as weird as it is, like, because even now, like, when we think of, like, Victorian London, we think of a caricaturized kind of yeah. over the top. Exactly. But I'm thinking of a even more caricaturized version, so it's like, mm-hmm. you've got, like, these slabs of buildings that are, like, just, like, factories. Well, that, that's the reason I'm sort of saying to, stuff like that. Yeah. As, that's what I'm sort of saying with the whole grotesque side mm. of things, which is the exaggerations of the, the main functions of the area, which seem to then basically sort of take a stand in the entire design. Mm. Its function is the bit which sort of forces itself through as almost like a caricature in, in itself, but a dark one in this case. Mm. Yeah. I like the idea of having various spires and cranes and things all kind of scratching their way into the sky. Um, yeah. Give it that harsh, um, continuing that harsh feel, and it works with all of the moving of cargo um, and all the constant building. If they're always knocking things down, building new stuff, putting up more, yeah, like constant, work. like constant, like folding, and like you said, buildings going up, coming down, going up again, coming back down. Going yeah. Down. So we are just basically building London. <laughs> yeah, essentially. And that kind of... I don't know quite how it sits within the map, but the idea almost that if it sat sort of in a slight valley, then you could have not only the kind of sea mist, sea fog come in, it would hold the smog. Yeah. yeah. So it could really be that kind of its own little... Al- essentially also, like microclimate. If, also, if it was... Um... You saying about it like being in like a valley or something? It does make it does remind. There's a place in Warhammer Fantasy. Um, I can't remember its name now, but it's an area where <laughs> the valley sides are so high, the place very rarely gets sun. It mm-hmm. gets bright because it's daytime, but it never gets direct sun. Is that the so... place they? Mounted a big mirror on the hillside to beam sunlight into the town. 
into yeah. the town square, the only place they could do it without yeah. sort of burning the place down. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just like that would miss like even like with obviously mm-hmm. like you said the fog and the sea mist and the smog and then it also just doesn't get direct sight. So it's just a dark dreary. That, be, that does become a very good question. In which case, which way would our sun rise and set? Because if you did end up with such a beautifully dark and dreary area, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Uh... You, you, we're putting more <laughs> off of watching for a minute because everybody's eating. I don't it's know like... what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Snacks are great for helping with the thinking. Uh, <laughs> snacks, snacks, this is my dinner. <laughs> so, Pretty much the same I, here, to be fair. I like the idea that like, the slums, the, the lower end of the town doesn't see a lot of sunlight because of the smog, because of the smoke, because of the the mists, yeah. and possibly also just the height of the buildings. Mm-hmm. Like, not yeah. necessarily the height of... I was of... about to say, that's what we could... That's, if, yeah. we didn't wanna, if we didn't want to have it set, like, deep in a valley or anything, we could have it that literally is just everyone who's rich has built things so big yeah. that poor people don't get to see the sun very <laughs> often. Um, they're either stuck in a factory or fucking Mr. Moneybags is blocked out. So. Um, oh, that could be interesting, actually. It's a little play on that. Basically, the bottom being very dark and dreary, but the top being a lot more lighter. Or mm. getting breaking out of the smog. You have That's the... kind of my thought I had on the valley, you could then have mm. the top edge of the valley just lined with these beautiful buildings and it is all the people looking down on basically their I think workforce. <laughs> I I think that the the people like Vectis Haven doesn't have that differentiation between mm-hmm. I, I think that the, the rich people who can afford to not live there or who would live in the nice places in Vectis Haven just go elsewhere. Yeah. They have word sent to them yeah. about what's like, going on. They have people that look after Vectis Haven and, and watch over the town. Mm-hmm. And I would say that... No, I... To sort of elaborate on what you've got, it'd be more on the lines of if they'd started it up themselves. But these buildings where they would have resided are very beautiful, but run down. And that effectively have been now occupied by the people that they put in charge to look after the area when they've gone off to better places. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's still, in the entire run of the place, it's still the most spectacular to look at. But it is run down if you were to take a proper look at if, it. If you look closely, and most people don't, because they're looking at it from that distance of mm-hmm. that's Mr. So-and-so's who owns the factory's house. We don't go there because... Yeah, it could yeah. also be that actually from the front they still look really grand, but from the back they've had a factory bolted to them. Yeah. And inside, um, yeah. they look yeah. just garbage like moth-eaten everything and cracked floorboards and all that jazz and just a layer of soot Hmm. a layer of soot on everything yeah you open the window for a couple of minutes and and then there's soot you can even place it so far out for the sake of the food vendors as a Mm -hmm. little dash of storytelling that you know unless you get it fresh straight Mm -hmm. out of the kitchens you're guaranteed to eat something with soot attached to it yeah yeah, yeah. This place, this place needs to be completely polluted. Like all that adds not... into an element of almost costume design that people have tried to make effectively their own versions, almost like gas masks and stuff like that, so where they can work and survive there. It's yeah. a dreary place where even you don't even trust the air you breathe there while you're there. So too. The idea, at the very least, that rogues just blend in because everyone has some sort of face covering. Exactly. So to just uh, cut in for a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, Tanny said a while back, 
gothic punk town, I think very much there is a a subculture of punk, of rebel against the system types within Vector's mm -hmm. Haven. Oh yeah, it is so rich for it that there there can't there almost can't not be that group of yeah, stick to the man uh, mm -hmm. people like it. <clears throat> it's almost demanding it. Mm. Yeah. Um, the other one, the the other question Tanny's asked of, does the place run on Steam? I think there's definitely a lot of Steam and and smoke power involved. I think. I would there's... say so. It would be very generic. I mean, if we're going with the whole thing that soot's going everywhere, that that would be the main power source. There's. Mm -hmm. there's... Source. Yeah, it, it's not necessarily steampunk. I think it's it, it's diesel punk or coal yeah, punk. Yeah, it's, it's effectively what they've had. Though I would also place in that this would also be a perfect place to throw in some kind of artifices trying to bring in a new technology of sorts. Well, we've very it was much like trying to force the, magic the, into it. We've very much got the unnamed race, the forged race. Mm. And yeah. their thing, and the the artificers that work with that. Uh, yes, Tanny, please throw suggestions into the chat. Unlike yeah, well, unlike any. the pub quiz, we're very welcome for you to put <laughs> your answers in the chat in this stream. <laughs> Just remember to remember to do the exact same thing in a pub quiz. <laughs> put all answers straight into the chat, and all suggestions, any questions with answers. <laughs> I do like uh, that we're now just pandering out because we're all very interested to see what the question is. Yeah, we're, also we're assuming it. It gives them a chance to type as well. There we go. Oh. Maybe create mood boards of images of what structure and style you want to show for your lands I towns. I think that's definitely something which we need to do next. I and think that... To a degree, I'd even suggest that we may even pull yourself in for that one, Tanny. I think that's very um, much something... I think something... we need to pull in Artist Eye. For that one, I think that's Sorry, very much easy. something that we should do b between the streams. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how good a mood board making stream would be, but a, a stream where we go through and have, and these are the mood boards we've made. Possibly, I'll doodle... gesture this way onto the stream. A doodle stream, though, doodling different buildings. True. I quite like drawing buildings. Yeah, we could we could definitely do that as well. Uh, I yeah. think there's. There's the potential for that one. Does anyone else have anything we want to add to Vectus Haven? I've I've noted down, and if if we want to add to it, we can, but dark fantasy gothic London pushed to the extreme. Spires mm -hmm. and cranes constantly scrape the sky and the town is constantly rebuilding itself. Knocking the uh oh, that should be buildings. Over and building new things. The nice buildings at the top of the valley are just fascias, not actually nice buildings. Yeah. People yeah. frequently wear black or dark grey colours with face masks or coverings. Yeah. I think one of my suggestions would be there is no wood. The town does not have wood because there's so much fire from all of the different engines. Fighting fires in that kind of place would just not happen. It makes a lot of sense, unless you're getting um, scrap wood or anything like that. I, I don't think you'd have any fresh. They're burning wood there. it. I don't know. I grant you that, but yeah, it's more along the lines of that. Whatever's yeah, made is not going to be lasting. So, you might come across a wooden structure, but it's already been ripped apart. Yeah, I think or also, it's, or it's like scrap that some <clears throat> person's made a shan like a shack out of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But even then. The panels are being ripped off, they're being taken yeah. to be burned. Yeah. I think as well, that begs the question of, is this a place where, like, what are they making here? Um, so are they working a lot with metals? Are they working just something to think about? It doesn't fit with the architecture that we're doing, but it would be a question mark I would put in there. Would be, what sort of stuff are they actually making? Yes. Um, and well, yeah. how are they getting it in and out of the town? I like the idea of having some really big lock gates. 
We have said that when it comes down for the sake of the motion, there was the reason behind all the rivers and the locks. So yeah, they yeah. The Vectus Haven is a port. It is uh, it is on a large number of rivers that lead back into the center of the continent or out mm -hmm. from the center. Um, there is the possibility <coughs> of of trade being run through the town, yeah. but I think. Possibly, yeah, just shipping yeah. from it. Um, I, yeah, I do have one more point which I'd like to put forward for the sake of the structure and how it's created. Yes. Which is, uh, when it comes down to roadways, alleyways, and such like that, the only ones which are wide are the ones which are for function. So they were made for carts to be pulled up and down, and they're made for... And basically, you'd have the functional ones, in which case you need to get out of the way of whatever the function's for. Mm -hmm. Or you have the side ones, which are... Basically, they couldn't care less about who's walking down the sides. It's for you to try and manage your way around. So it's almost like tons and tons of little tiny shallow alleyways. And a few wide open birches, which are literally designed for... No, no, this is taking stuff to the factory, or taking stuff over to this, or taking it down to the port. And if you want to use this way, you need to get out of the way of whatever's coming through. It's, it's almost that equivalent of the old bridges with the little triangle step out sections. Yeah. That you get. So it's like that, but they're literally divots in buildings. And you exactly, just have yeah. to get in them. So, yeah. apologies. Cool. I, I was dealing with pop-ups <laughs> that were appearing on the stream for some of that. Uh, what, what note am I making for this? Okay, so uh, when it comes down to the streets and alleyways, the only wide enough street or wide streets are the ones of function. They are the ones which are designed to take things from one place to another place, usually from, say, the port to the factory or something along those lines. Every other alleyway, basically all space has been taken up shy of a bit of, a bit of room for you to move around, so they become like very tight alleyways of sorts. This is a town full of tight alleyways and nice, large, functional roads, but you have to get out the way of everything if you go up there. And I'll give you some time to think about how you <laughs> want to write that down. Because <laughs> effectively, now what we're creating is effectively a town which is a labyrinth with some wide bits and yeah. dangerous road in the middle. Again, we're creating Victorian London. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, God, yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not taking away from that little aspect. It is definitely Victorian London. And we're not exactly making the road system any easier. <laughs> In fact, we oh, might no. have just cranked it up a bit. But it just goes to say that it, it's literally one of those bits where this place is not designed for the people who live there. It was designed for the product which comes out of it. Yeah, it is yeah. designed for the industry. Which we'll figure out later. Yeah. We'll, we'll work the, out the what that product the, is. The workers and people are complete second thought. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't go second thought. I'd say like maybe fourth or fifth they, thought. They were considered yeah. at some point. <laughs> They're a necessity, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> and even that's up for debate. Uh, I've just realised yeah. I'm going to pop the. I'm going to pop the graph here and the righty bit over there so that we aren't over the top of the writing at the very edges. Yeah. I don't think that's we were, a good call, but just to make sure. So I've noted yeah. down streets and alleyways. The only wide enough streets are those with function, i.e. taking things from the ports to the factories. Every other alleyway is tight and winding. Even the functional streets need to be cleared to allow things to be moved through them with divots or passing places in buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any other notes on Vector Haven? Just a thought on weather. So we're talking, this is the middle of the map, so I'm assuming the north of the map is the kind of cold and it gets more dry and arid to the south? Is that what we're... We seem to be yes. playing with that if you take a look at the is... map. Yeah, that's that how we're going. definitely seems to be what we're sort of throwing down, but... Somehow the perfect climate is in that middle belt. Yeah. And the extremes have got themselves to the top and the bottom, yet surprisingly not hit affecting Norrock. 
or the the islands to the sides, which yeah, the, we, we, could, we, we can the find a way to explain to the that. The sides have not been uh, heavily discussed. Have not been heavily discussed, nor have they been coloured to match the potential I, climates of. The... Yeah. To be clear, when it comes down to it, there's another question of how the climate is actually created in the first place. Is it created, or is it something which is just regular weather on the outside? Considering that we've made effectively a central location in this uh, this continent here, could it potentially be that we have created an area where, because it is a centralised area, they've tried to make it accessible for each of the parts of the continent? Because normally a continent would be quite overtaken by the different things, and it would be quite odd to see a desert anywhere near that close to a snowy peak. Maybe something to force to think about next time, but yeah. it's something which you want to put forward. Because it was something which I've been thinking about recently. It's a case of maybe this is something which actually has been generated rather than has been... I mean, there could magic. be an element of, of magic and gods at play. Potentially, True. is one I mean, it is a, yeah, I was going to say, it is fantasy. Well, exactly. Anyway, so it's, it's something it's for us to have a, a mull over because it does come into but, a, that element. With yeah, obviously, is, the building I, types would still be the same because this area is expecting to have all the snow because it's being put there, and I also, this area is expecting to have this and that whatnot. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think necessarily like the mountains aren't necessarily like we're not talking Arctic at the top here necessarily no, no, so no, no. they are just snow capped they are snow capped yeah, snow mountains no because it's high you know like yes. like the himalayas and things yeah yeah it, it, it's not like you know desert 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 green grass green grass green grass green grass snow yeah. it, no no it's, i, I grant yeah. you that it was as i say it's something which came to me as a fall it, it's just it, it, because... i think it's just that how the map makes it look because it's the limitation of the map, really. Well, right. that's the thing. No, I, I get that side of things. I'm not uh, trying to pick on exactly how the, the Rocky Formation came about. It literally came as a thought. With the way that it looked, it did open up that idea of maybe this was something which was created to be effectively, this is a continent of all of us, which would certainly explain why it's trying to be taken over at the same time. Potential. This would be the perfect place for them to try and take over before you take over anywhere else, because it has been created as a place of unity. Right. But we can get back to that. That's Once again, that's a, that we isn't shall, something... We shall return to this. Yeah. <laughs> My architecture thought was have you thought about tides? Oh. Oh, that's a good one for the sake of the Generally course. speaking on a planet, if we're talking round planet and we're smack somewhere in the middle, the middle section has less tides than the outside edges, in which case that would be the perfect place to have a port because there aren't huge tides to deal with. Yes. Um, in which case then we might need to consider how the tides work as far as the Staros, because it could be quite cool to play with the tides and actually that's how they start the hauling of the ships. They wait until a really high tide to get the ships part way up. Um, I and things like that when it comes that. to building. If they're broken ships as well, we could even place down maybe the element of uh, if there was low ground, I can't remember what on earth it's called, but underneath the water effectively as you come in. Like sandbank kind of. Effectively. So it's more a place where people get caught yeah. and then when the high tide comes in, they drag it in and add it to the structure. Mm. I need to. I need to be right back. I've got to deal with. Uh, deal with something. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Okie dokes. Okay. We believe you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn your camera off for a minute because I can do that. But yeah, maybe maybe just a note on the tides are quite even in this particular port, so you don't see the big tide swings. The different, you know, like when you go and you walk up a river that's tidal, you can see that shift in where all the trees cut oh, off. Good, yeah. Like you don't get that sense that you get that there. Okay. Um, I would potentially then take a extra step from there as well. And go to say that when it comes down to it, the, the channels which they use, or the canals, the rivers and all that lot are maintained. So mm -hmm. that they keep their shape because it's a shape which they've got themselves adjusted to. 
because if it was something which was left to nature, they would adjust, they would change over time. Yeah, that's where they've canaled it, basically, isn't it? Exactly. And we decided to try and keep everything the same so that it doesn't affect them as they work. Yeah. And maybe they're dredging rivers to keep them deep enough. Exactly. The... Basically, they are making maintenance runs on the on the rivers and all the waterways to keep them as they are. I've noted that the canals and rivers are man-made and well-maintained, not mad-made, as I nearly wrote. <laughs> are you sure? Um, <laughs> spelling seems to be a bit of fun tonight. Don't need spelling. Um, so spellings, for chumps. There's, there's uh, three I'm others that I have. Chumper, geez. Three others that I have decent ideas on. Okay. What's what's your next one? Is, okay, yeah, let's go for most it. of them. I grant you. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we want to discuss Sanctuary Springs, Lawfell, or Sunspire? I do have something I'd like to bring forward as an idea for Sunspire, considering we've got the avian race up there. I think if we leave Lawfell till last... I agree. Because Lawfell is sort of the capital, the main... And was meant to be effectively a combination so, for all together of different tactics and skills. Sunspire. Uh-huh. Sunspire mm -hmm. is built up in the mountains. It's... It's a uh, mountain side buildings. I've always pictured him as being like um, stilt, stilted off the top of the mountains. Okay, I like how we are similar in thought to a degree. Um, um, it really depends on how far you carry on. I want to carry on here and the rest of yours. Stilted buildings and stilted certain walkways like they don't have a lot of walkways between the buildings because the avians themselves don't need them mm -hmm. um so where there are walkways it's like for the convenience of the other races more than it is for the avians um, so it only goes to the locations where they're allowed to go yeah it, i like that it's very much you know, you might have the building where we keep the visitors, the few <laughs> buildings that the visitors can go and visit, and then sort of the big and important avian buildings are off to one side and you can't get to them without employing something to be able to fly or climb over to it. Mm. They they aren't easy to get to for the sake of for, for for the specific purpose of you shouldn't be there unless you have been invited. Yeah, why are you here? <laughs> like, okay, I'm loving this. I I also a lot of this is going by bits I was thinking myself. So I, yeah, I'm loving this. I also very much think as as we discussed, they need like the big steep, uh, pointed roofs to keep the snow off of them. I don't know, like, part of it, part of my thoughts is, like, it's a combination of that sort of traditional Asian buildings, but also, like, some of the thoughts in my head are, like, Viking or, or Rohan buildings, Ooh. like... I hadn't thought of that, I like that. Some of that element to them. And again, I, I have a feeling you could have you could have pitched at it anywhere in this world and I would have liked that. <laughs> yeah, I think that Ben's name on it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think possibly yeah. there's some wood here in yeah. the buildings. Okay. If they're tall structures, they're going to want a slow-grown wood to be really strong, in which case they might need some older forests around i i have an idea on this side of things there's okay. something which i've been working on when it comes down to this and it seems to be working perfectly along the lines of everything which is there the avians we placed them down as the smartest of the races didn't we they Effectively, are more they, they are generically very much, uh, uh, yeah. the pompous yeah sort of it, along the same lines as a lot of fantasy things have the elves being the pompous we are better than you race 
the avians and the elves fight over that title in this world i wanted to place down a suggestion that the the avians have been doing a bit of genetic manipulation to try and create the best wood as it were okay effectively they have created a wood which is as almost as strong or if not stronger than concrete which they guide and slowly turn into buildings effectively taking the idea of making like a giant nest but a hell of a lot stronger and something which can survive wherever they want to build it it can grow quicker it can do bits and pieces and whether that's by magic or whether that's by their manipulation which they've placed down but it becomes their perfect building material and so you generally end up seeing most of it built out of the same stuff I return I just had that idea, hello again that effectively they're almost weaving their buildings into being and guiding the branches where they want them to go and such forth so everything becomes how they want it and yet still holding to their roots where they'd started off living in the trees oh interesting and i was I, thinking I, I, I that is about as far as i've got with the idea but i just like the idea of exactly that and the nest spires exactly milady exactly i i i do like some of that for i i was liking some of that for the elves as well but yeah i I feel I need catching up because I Sorry. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, we are discussing Sunspire, the home of the avians. Right. Uh, so far, we have discussed that, in in my viewpoint, they are tall, stilted buildings built into the side of mountains. Uh, yeah. The the buildings themselves are difficult to gain access to. One, because they are built at the top of the mountains, which is obviously already difficult to get to. But also because the avians themselves don't need walkways between their buildings. The walkways that are there are very much for when the the, the lesser folk come to visit. Yeah. Uh, and so they are sort of between the very utilitarian avian hotel effectively and those parts of the town that we let the visitors go to yeah and then the rest of the buildings like the homes the the more elaborate parts of the the archives everything else is accessible because the avians can fly to it and those that they allow to go there will fly to it will be flown to it <laughs> or drag yeah um, <laughs> and so i was saying sort of and sort of having very tall uh s sloped roofs to make sure that the snow runs off of them yeah and then very much either the the sort of traditional Asian buildings or with a flavour of Viking stroke Rohan styled yeah. like great halls and things was was where my yeah, mind was like very, very high very high peak roofs to allow the the correct angle to allow things to just run off. Yeah. And for the dragons to land on top. <laughs> Rather than just <laughs> um, I like the idea with Ben's thinking about stuff growing into shape. I'm wondering whether you can use that as, you know, like when you go into churches, you get all of the arches, mm. whether actually each of those are trees and then they grow up out of the roof and then the rest of the walls have been built in in between out of the same sort of material but it's been manufactured and just honed slightly because if they can grow something this strong then i would imagine they would also then be able to machine something that strong you know the other the other thing i really like with this idea of them them growing the trees into the buildings is that is something i'd been thinking of for the elves 
because I, I was also thinking practically the same thing for the elves, <laughs> like because they're plant people, elves, so it makes sense for them to do it. Elves having plant buildings that they like tree houses, but literally tree houses, like houses that are built out of a tree that they All have built inside giant trees. Yeah, to be fair, like, when it comes yeah. to well, we've already got a. A contest between them already that's what about I'm thinking. those more intelligent. Contest. That's another thing I would, so I would comes have to say. Something, we created this first. No, we created this first. What you're stealing? I don't. But also, it, like it, again, it's an, another thing where it's like both of them. Both of them claim to be the oldest race, but they don't actually 100 percent know exactly. But, but and, it's, also, and it's the same with this. It's like, we created this. No, we created this. And once again, they both not sure which one <laughs> of them created this. But not just that. <laughs> but they then have contests over. Who can make the best thing? Yeah, like yeah, and because they so are both... got more and more like like in both in both cities or towns, whatever. You've got more and more flamboyant buildings being grown, and it's like, well, we've got the most, we've got the best looking grown buildings. No, we have the best <laughs> grown building. But you've also got elves versus avians, who are both the long lived races, who are like, well, I've spent. A hundred years growing this tree into a, uh, you know, the local school. Yeah. As a, yes, I've spent two hundred years and I've fashioned this tree into. Uh, I don't know. The... Yeah. Well, I fashioned this tree into bit. that into our college. So well, well I fashioned this one. <laughs> Hi, Hello, Irish Demon. hi, the Irish Demon, nineteen ninety three. Welcome in. This sounds chaotic. It is Hello. chaotic, and that's half the fun. Uh, we met you at MCM, if my memory serves. It's a very patchy memory, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> Did we? Who? I'm just gonna. I'm gonna smile and nod because I wasn't there. Yes, I'm gonna go with okay. chaos person who okay. got kicked out of you... the D and D for being too chaotic and is <laughs> coming back with. Questionable roles to play. Uh, are you the <laughs> Ring of Enlargement guy? <laughs> are you the one who's going to give me wonderful ideas to test by John? <laughs> oh, you didn't hear that, John. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. If they are that person, they already warned me and that they John were wishes to it. announce that Ben is being removed from all games. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But no. That wonderful chaos, because it immediately starts building the world already, just for the sake of the whole bit of, no, no, yeah. we made the best. No, no, we made the best. But, so I th we, need, we need to keep, I think we need to keep building on all these things that the elves and avians both claim to be theirs, and both claim that they made. And just keep more, and then there's got to be just one thing, one thing they agree <laughs> on. And well, it's something ridiculous. Something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. Welcome but just in something completely inconsequential. Welcome in the like, Irish yeah, demon. Indeed. <laughs> yes, it is that guy. <laughs> also, and it is good to confirm that you're the friend as well. <laughs> also, I am loving Law's idea of a secret society secluded from everyone, uh, which is a mix of elves and avians who, it turns out, have been trading knowledge between the races for ages. And that's why they're similar. I I don't yeah. necessarily know if like that's the reason they're similar, but the the rate the, the secret oh. society of people that have gone. You know what? We are very similar, guys. That does yeah. immediately why, sort of throw in my. We... I'm imagining why there's we... something like our version of the White Lotus. Yes. Why can't Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Yeah. Uh, why can't we be friends? Hmm. Why can't we be friends? Yeah. <laughs> but what would we call our version if we're doing this? I, I think it has to be seed and tree related if we are doing this. Uh, it's it's definitely I love the in idea. some way tree related. While you guys <laughs> think about that, I'm going to start typing some of these notes up. <laughs> Probably an idea. Yeah, so... I mean, the first one which immediately jumps into my head is the acorn, but then again, I think it depends on what is... I the seed I, of the I greatest not, tree. I just thought it's a brown because it's a thing. It's obviously it's a plant thing which makes it to the elves, and it's a branch which birds can perch on and and be part of and everything. 
Oh, that's true. Probably, I can um, see that. But they're, they're, they're dumb idea. Also, another even though we've we've kind of mentioned like kind of like um, kind of naturally grown nests, it could be kind of like the nest society or the nest group or nest because mm -hmm. once again, plant matter but a thing for birds, so could be yeah. yeah I'd I kind of wanted some sort of vine, perhaps because True. vine kind of comes with communication, weaving between things. Do it um, for the vine. Finds its way into stuff. That is true as well. So the vine does connect trees together, and especially considering both these races seem to be quite connected to their trees. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Or the roots. Perhaps they could be yeah. done the roots. The roots which go underground and are unseen but might connect underground. Where the roots work. I like I'm liking oh. the roots. Now we just need to think of a game like Pai Cho where they can play the <laughs> play the root tiles so they know who they're talking to. <laughs> oh, I love the idea of a secret society. I'm going to be thinking on this side of things now. On how do you show that you're a part of the secret society without giving up the secret society? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I do like that whole thing that when it comes down to it, there have been these deep set rooted. Uh, championships and uh, battles and fights between them for the sake of the differences which are actually similarities between their races and especially these ones who are trying to get over it i love the idea of the ones who are trying to get over it yeah it's such a classic it's a classic uh storytelling trope but it's such a wonderful one there's so many negative ones out there i like the use of a good one I'm trying to think of a way that they kind of like s s say without saying that they're part of it, like the like the secret handshake or the weird obtuse phrase. Law suggests stick your feathers up like elf ears or elves wearing feathers in their hair. It's not a bad tactic. Maybe um, it, it comes down to how obvious, or would that be taken as obvious at all? I mean, the way I'm seeing it is almost along the lines of like there is a method that I think once again like Pai Cho because Pai Cho did it perfectly where the way that you prove that you're a part of the member is that basically you made the giant white lotus after presenting your white lotus tile and it's a whole element can we do something similar to that because it's something where you don't want it to stand out so much that if we wanted to make a mission on it for example it wasn't a case of you have to look out for someone who's wearing a feather. You kind of want it's... that same sort of thing like the the silver harp badge. Yeah. Where it's like, if you know what that means, you know what that means. But exactly. otherwise, it blends yeah. in and you can just be wearing a badge that's a harp. Because, because you I mean, like harping. To be fair, that's, it's not a... If you could make a design... Which is effectively, if it is just between those two races alone, it's a symbol between those two races, you can make something which, to one individual race, you could effectively pass it off as, oh, no, 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 this is an ear, or this is a, a feather. So taking your idea, uh, my dear Lady Law, uh, to effectively have it so it is a feather and ear, you can make the sort of feather design in a sort of elven ear, which in one shape and um, one way of looking at it could be the ear and the other side could be taken the scene as the feather instead with lines coming out of it. A song would be a wonderful way of doing things, to be fair. I mean, that's a, a very bardic way of taking a look at it. Oh! Passing on knowledge. Actually, bard works very nicely for that if we're playing into that side of things. It could be like a, a. I was going to say a whistled tune, but then it's like, well, then you need to be able to whistle, which is hard. It, <laughs> Some people find it hard. Thing, even if well, it comes down to just replicating the tune. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need to be able to be the best singer or anything like that. You literally just play in something. Yeah, you, 
just just yeah, just even if it's just like you're you're at a t at a at a table at a tavern and you just tap it on the tap it on the table. That just... is a very good point there. I mean, you, know, you can turn the feather idea into almost a jewelry related aspect as well. What about like if it's a it's feather really... with like a root or Oh, that's thing an that idea. Shana's just drawn. <laughs> I've been doodling. So you've got kind of an elven ear stylized in the top half and a feather in the bottom half, but it could be more just a swirly, the the top line work would be more just swirled metal. Um, and if I was going to have that made, I would probably say the very tip of the feather, almost to twist round into a loop. Hmm. So that would be where you would connect it up. But the other side, also sticking with that whole element of the roots, having it over the very base of the feather, so it looks like it goes wrong, but it's actually sort of actually designed to almost like twist down into a couple of spiraled loops at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So where the stalk of the feather would be, they actually turn into the roots themselves. Yeah, potentially. I can the continue temptation to find. Try and convince anyone to turn this into some of our own personal jewellery now. <laughs> also, I've been doodling Ooh. this Ooh. sort of one. Ooh. I don't know if I can get my camera to actually focus on it. It'll think about it. Yes. I've got pictures in the Discord, but I've got that kind of just layered. You've got the dock at the front. You've got windows underneath the dock because that could be some of the accommodation where basically it's, we're just slotting you in. <laughs> We're just fitting you places. You've, I've only put one crane in, but you see all sort of the spires in the background, the different um, chimneys and all of that sort of stuff, and literally shutters right down onto the water's edge because the tide doesn't move <laughs> where they can just sail things straight in. <laughs> just just doodling more than anything. Oh, it's a good doodle, I'll Law, say that much. It seems Law would also quite nice. like the jewellery now, please. I also do like your point there, Law, that obviously the way the birds harmonise is very unique. And almost that element that, yes, the elves could be humming something which is entirely their own. The bird races could then come in and almost harmonise to them, and that way you have that connection. And almost really, the only problem with that is, depending on which person you're trying to do it to, because if an elf comes to across an elf... Well, this is a tune I happened to hear while I was in the woods. Uh, <laughs> another elf doing it. <laughs> no, I like the but jewelry idea. It's a good it's, idea. It's... The jewelry idea is a good one for the sake of it's a quick little show, which would only mean something if you knew what you're looking at. Once again, it is the the white lotus tile aspect. I think possibly no one really pays attention to it unless they know what it is. Possibly at some point, not on this particular stream, but at some point when we go into more detail into the roots, which, by the way, because I've now added a note about the roots, they have appeared on this... Uh, <laughs> on here now. The um, brain's getting bigger. <laughs> I've chucked my two Soon doodles we'll take into... On Ultron. <laughs> I've chucked my two doodles into the streaming chat, John, if you want to nice. grab them for stream. I, I will throw them into the stream. One second. That's not... They are just, just doodles, but... I don't know if you're doing it talking like... towards this. Me, I'm just playing with my egg. <laughs> uh... Ben has egg. <laughs> uh, so, where's that going to open? Pardon me, too much screaming today. <laughs> so, Doodle One here is is a view of Vectus Haven. Oh wow! There you go. Okay, yeah, your camera was really not doing that justice. Nope. <laughs> uh, and then. Second thing here is just a quick sample of the feather ear jewelry combo. That's to say, I think with that one, literally having the top of the feather sort of twisting around and almost becoming like a yeah. necklace. It depends on what kind of uh, uh, jewelry we end up sort of suggesting. If it's like a pin, you're almost perfect there. As I say, I think with just the the very bottom of it, almost having it tail off and sort of twist into a couple where it looks like it's a mistake from the jeweler but actually that is the point which means something it is the roots uh but i think that yeah i think to go along with that piece of jewelry be it a a necklace or a brooch or or something along those lines some sort of hairpin 
perhaps. I think when it one. comes down to it, it doesn't necessarily matter what the jewellery yeah. is. It's more if the, you've the got design the design right. Uh, but the, exactly. the other thing to go with it, and that'll be a thing that we can discuss in a later stream, is I think there needs to be both a call and response. Yes, definitely. Uh, that, that you give and that the other person gives the correct answer to, to be like, I am identifying you as a member of this group, not just someone who happened to see some cool jewellery that one time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think that's, that's the other side of things. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's that whole aspect that, once again, it's a bit like, once again, I've kind of thrown down about the Lotus style. The Lotus style is literally there as the opener. Yeah. It is what you do after the Lotus style, which goes to show what on earth you're actually there for. But it's, it, it's also sort of that, you know, those who harp thing or the 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 crow flies at midnight and the the owl sees all or you know it's that like or much like in uh dungeon of the mad mage recently we had the the how many eyes does the xanathar have as many as there are stars in the sky <laughs> Law says, no, because how is IRL me accidentally going to discover amazing secret societies purely out of their obsession <laughs> for shiny things? Stop ruining my adventures! Don't worry, I'll introduce... I, mean, I, I don't know <laughs> anybody Definitely don't know any of out those. there at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, so in terms of the notes... They're gonna come for me. <laughs> in terms of the notes I have for Sunspire, buildings are tall and on stilts with tall vaulted ceilings to allow the snow to run off the buildings without issue. Viking-style great halls mixed with smaller buildings. Walkways run between the sections of the city that regular land-dwelling folk can visit, including a communal hostel slash hotel. Uh, other buildings would only be accessible via flight. Trees have been bred and grown into shape into the buildings or nest spires. The elves and avians argue over who is the better group of the tree architects. The Roots is a secretive group that exists with both, with members of both the Avians and the Elves who have realised that the two races have more in common than their rivalry. And that is a note okay. I'm going to add to the Elves. And to the Avians, actually, because I feel that that note should be in all of these places. Uh... I've also started, by the that way. That is not a bad idea. One of the one of the things I have started doing is putting in the um, where I've got them. I started putting in the the racial traits and like actual gameplay bits for the races. Yeah, you know, just as a, just as a little side note, that's the thing I was doing. Uh, Nifty. Do like your idea, the Irish demon, but the uh, the jewelry could have a spiritual or magical aura mm. to demonstrate. I mean, especially if you make it because anyone can detect magic, but you make it a particularly useless magic aura to come off of it, so that it is becomes something which is almost laughable. Leave it to a side, not really paying any attention because its true meaning is much deeper than what it presents as. Mm. It's it's an idea which we could play with, to say the least, but I think it would be a case of having to decide exactly what you would put on it. So, is there, before we move on, anything else for Sunspire? The only other thing which I'd like to place in is more for the sake of dungeon-wise. Because okay. I feel like a, a civilization like that would have, jail would have dungeon of sorts. And I reckon that this sort of place would have two. One is, is for their avians, the ones which they wish they're a part of their culture, so they're going to try and keep them separate from the others. And the others, effectively, if you have disrespected where you have come, or where you have been invited into, you're effectively imprisoned into the root system of it instead. You are not allowed up in the trees. There's a place of respect, that is a place of uh, almost like their holy ground. 
if you have disrespected that, you will be locked below it. Which is some well, once again sort of playing with, but haven't really solidified. But does that make sense? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> I muted. Um, if you had like columns and things of roots, um, like so it's literally hollowed out under the tree, you could have that the roots have actually been intertwined together because they are this ridiculously strong material to where it creates various different sort of almost cells. a few labyrinthy kind of spaces and a few cell type spaces perhaps because it does also open up the possibility that if you have a dungeon like that and that's how they've sort of designed things so that they can lock dangerous people away you also have the same method which they could use potentially to lock away uh probably higher up and once again in their main area items of high importance i feel very much there is some element of of the archive that is that warehouse from the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Like that that bit where it's like we've got that locked away and you don't need to worry about it ever because it's in this building we keep all of the shit in. Nothing could go wrong with that, right? Right. <laughs> um so I've just put, if you've been invited into the town and disrespect the laws, you are locked into a dungeon built into and out of the labyrinthine root network of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, okay, let, let us move on. And we are now going to move down from the very north of the map. We're going to go down to the very south end of the map to Sanctuary Springs. Okay. So is this kind of oasis in a desert sort of yes. vibes? Okay. This is cool. this is the civilized bit of the desert. There might be there might be nomadic people that move around the desert. There might be other small settlements within the desert. We've not really touched upon that. I think we did at one point between streams name the desert. Did we name the desert? I don't particularly remember that, but then again, I uh, wouldn't surprise if suggestions have been thrown around. Ah, uh, yes. The suggestion for the desert is Erum. Yeah. Uh, the name means empty place in the language of the elves. Ooh. I yeah, do like it. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's a good name. And the reason I couldn't find it when I was looking for it now is I didn't put it in the right folder on my notes. <laughs> so it's, it's there now. It's one of those things where I know that you've you've said in the past where suggestions will be put aside until they're confirmed. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's perhaps what you've done there. That's possibly, possibly that was a thing that we discussed briefly between streams of what do we call the desert? <laughs> uh... Are we okay with calling the desert? Aram. I, like I think the it's name. got a nice nice ring to it. Uh it means empty place. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, really. So Ooh. yeah. Sanctuary Springs is it's it's built on the edge of the oasis. It's not a big place. I'm I'm sort of picturing it being very one-story buildings, sandstone yeah. constructions. Yeah. Sort of as Sean was saying, either before the stream or at the beginning of the stream, flat roofs. Yeah. Hmm. Um. 
I like the idea of lots of sort of fabric shades strung between buildings yeah. Yeah. so you get this really nice effect of like <clears throat> light cutting through spaces because you're in under sort of it's all light and airy but it is in the shade um so it doesn't feel heavy but it is very you know white fabric draped across between any surface possible because they want to try and keep it nice and cool and that sort of thing yeah. um it might also be things like shutters. Shutters yeah. quite often appear in um, shutters warm in places place of windows. But yeah, especially for the sake of if you got a a sandstorm of any kind. Yeah, it gives a stronger defense against that coming in. Yeah. Plus, I guess it you're... also gives you the you can open the shutters so the air can come through, but it completely yeah. cuts the light, so you, you don't get the heat. You also don't want windows in the desert because they keep the heat in yeah and light reflects off of them and sets stuff on fire we know because buildings in london <laughs> also <Yep>. that <laughs> is there putting this forward is there a bigger building that's like the central thing in the town it might be the bazaar it might be the the home of the mayor or the person who runs the town or I do have a suggestion to go with this, and it's more than light of, uh, once again, going with the generalized uh, desert building, or at least some of the, the concepts. Okay. Which is effectively to dig down. Yeah. You you go down the because the the earth itself helps cool everything out. Basically, you create a, a lower level. Uh, for the sake of that, would be quite the uh, the thing to do. It's not exactly an easy task for anyone to do, so I can imagine that one becoming almost like the the socialising area of sorts. I'm... That they've all contributed and put into, so it becomes your bazaar. Yeah, becomes... I like it being the bazaar is this... I mean, for one, it's a very bizarre bazaar of... You go, <laughs> you go to the centre of town and there's a building and you go inside and you there's stairs downwards and it's like... You go into what is effectively, you know, a, a very small one room building and you go down inside and it just opens out into this large underground. The other thing, like from a, a building point of view and from a, um eco friendly building point of view, if you build buildings right and you build them almost like stacks you can get the air to pull in through small side sections to then yeah. funnel out through the middle so you would probably want some almost column empty column like spaces with buildings in and a big central open section that just vents the heat out basically yes um yes, as a subterranean would. and you it could be quite an interesting thing to be able at places to sort of see in um in old london it used to be really they used to hide some of the vents from the sewers in sort of buildings that weren't actually buildings oh yeah. but, like, uh, but you walk past yeah. them and you wouldn't really know the building but actually some of those the house thing, yeah, yeah back like, like a foot yeah, some of those kind of things would be quite cool, but actually for drawing the cool air in, um, so that to help the the space vent. So actually, you don't necessarily, unless it might be ways that people could sneak into places. Is kind of what I'm thinking from a if you need to infiltrate yeah. somewhere, maybe there are actually some of these other air duct vent kind of options i was thinking another one for the sake of gameplay when it comes down to the bazaar that play it a bit like uh, going into a saloon of sorts where this is meant to be a sanctuary this is meant to be a place where you don't have to worry when it comes down to the bazaar to make it so that everyone's fair and no one needs to worry that you have to give up your weaponry before you're even allowed in it's not that you won't get it back, you'll quite happily get it back, there's not a trouble there. But for it to be the safe space which it is, that everyone is level pegging, you have to give up your weaponry before you give 
before you go in, which opens up a wonderful gameplay up to you later on. Mm -hmm. But it also goes and adds in an element of how their land works. It's that element of we are in a sanctuary, and if you are to enjoy our places, you have to trust us so we can trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, adding into that little bit of world building as well. My my other question on Sanctuary Springs is it walled? I would say that the majority of it is probably a bit more open. This is a place which I think as far as we've been building it is more a case something which is slowly coming to be more of a town. For the time being it's more it was something which has been created there out of necessity, then slowly built into a place where they could create the bazaar. And a lot more odd deals could be done here. This place is a bit more off the beaten track. It's not an easy place for people to get to. So when it comes down to it, it's not that they don't want a wall. I think that it's that they haven't been able to get to that point yet. Okay, so is it planned to be walled? Is there a wall in progress? Have they have they got a gate and like section of wall that they have started, or is it? I can like see them somewhere starting a wall yeah. somewhere in the bazaar. They have like the the town uh, model where you see like coming summer next year wall because <laughs> I like oh. that idea because it also opens up the other side of things, which is. Why did they need the wall in the first place? And now, this being the main oasis in the desert, not to say there is or isn't any others out there, but if there are any creatures in the desert which require fluid, they'll come here. Yeah. So Shut that's an up, element of... Why are they? My, my other thought on... Perhaps they don't have walls, but mm. because the whole town is only one mm. story high, you've not got to get very high to be able to see the entire way round. So perhaps right. actually they have a central, airy, light, shaded middle piece um, that is purely for lookouts. And essentially before you can even get to the town, there are people coming to meet you. And partly Ooh, like it's to that, explain actually. to new people what what the vibe is. Partly it's to take the weapons off of you. <clears throat> um, Part, partly it's possibly also to be like, hey, you look like you're wandering and lost and need water. Yes. Yeah, we have water, but these are the rules. So yeah. here's your choice. You can either turn back now or, oh, or no, you can I'd, come in. I would love it if they had a sort of like, there's a survivor cost. Uh, depending on what you have, effectively, we're going to take a percentage of what you have, but we'll save you. We know how to get out of here. Well, I guess the other thing is, obviously, it it's a desert. They they tend to be fairly flat, right? Like, I mean, part of can part be dunes. tend to be fairly flat. It depends what kind of desert. The salt flat deserts are flat. But actually, the sand ones are massive dunes. When you think about the kind of pictures of camels walking yeah. along the very top, they walk on the top because you get down into the bottom and you can't see anything of anywhere. Well, this is the thing which I kind of liked is uh, an idea of it almost being like the desert from Journey is what I pretty much had in my mind, where there are dunes which are small, there are dunes which get a, a bit larger, but regardless of their size, they're still enough to disguise where there are these oases and other bits and pieces. You could end up walking around for days unless you walk a circle around the entirety of Sanctuary Spring and not even realise you've done it. Yeah, and that's why it's quite so out of the way and quite so special, because it is this really hard to find niche of an area. I like the the Irish demon suggests uh, a clock tower in the centre of town as this point that you look idea. out from. Mm -hmm. Which I guess the other part of that is, do they have... Uh, or the other follow-up thought that I was going to go with, of do they have uh, some sort of mechanical 
technological way of cooling the the town or the bazaar at the very least that's the kind of i think for me would be use or are they doing it solely with you aren't gonna lug a massive amount of stuff out into the desert um... i was gonna say they, they they would rely on natural oh yes yeah. to... i think they are highly yeah. on the natural side of things or potentially so they, use you know, of they, magic they, for the sake of that. Like, buildings would be whitewashed, as as Sean said. Yeah. They'd be like thoroughfares to allow air and things to pass through naturally to cool things. The way that they do it in um when I was travelling through some of the parts of Southeast Asia is they have really fine mist sprayed into the air. So I quite like the idea that at the top of the bazaar um in in each of the inlets that let the cool air in it's misted as it goes through or like run through dripping water so that it pulls some of that it cools as it goes if that makes sense yeah. um good, yeah. so it's yeah I, I imagine as much natural as possible um which you can um you can do especially if for example this particular place has wind that regularly goes in one direction you just turn any vents to face that way the wind pushes in and pushes down mm -hmm. um so i think you could mm -hmm. i think you could do it very very naturally without much issue and if they're living underground um for a chunk of it then it's not a huge problem my other thought with the kind of you have to give your weapons is perhaps the people who live on the very top it's a little bit it's still safe but it's just a little bit dodgy but oh, then no, to no, get no. into these column stacks it is you give all your weapons nothing comes in without us checking it like is much more if you want to enjoy the cool in here then it's our rules and exactly. then it doesn't matter so much about whether there's a wall around the outside edge of the settlement it's we're protecting the cause of these the, these cool spaces the thing, the thing i'm thinking about in terms of like a wall around the settlement is would they want one not necessarily to keep monsters and creatures out would they want one to obviously a sandstorm wouldn't be stopped by a wall but it would be negated at a lower level at and least. not being quite so stacked next to houses mm -hmm. yeah so maybe they would want one purely to so they don't have to keep digging their houses out every few days <laughs> yeah and that when one blows in and it stacks sand up against it they then the next couple of days once it's settled down take the time to pull it back out yeah. again and, and shuffle it they, they get like the people they don't like to go and shovel sand for the days yeah that could be interesting Are there um, creatures that live in the desert? Is that is that a thing? We we have not discussed it yet. Oh, I would assume there would be. There's got to be some sort of threat in the desert, hasn't there? Yes. Oh, right. gotcha. Almost certainly. What it is, yeah. we as I say, we haven't discussed it yet. Uh. I mean, we do have... Because that would also be wall, kind of... Yeah. Wall, on, on the list of mm. races, we have the Lasata, who are lizard folk. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, lizards are deserty. Yeah. Uh, Bro, lizards are kind of everywhere -y. Apart <laughs> <Yeah>. from... <laughs> tundra. Apart from Tundra. But but they, lizards they don't do well in the cold. But other than that, they're everywhere. Li lizards could get on very well in the desert. They could. It's very yeah. true. Um, there are also uh, several species of spider which would be able to as well. Yeah, I was going to say arachnid-wise, there'd be scorpions. Mm-hmm. Big bloody scorpions. <laughs> Massive, monstrous scorpions. I will say, that is one for creature-wise. I'll make a, a quick note on this one now. Because I saw something while I was at work, which I immediately thought, oh my god, that could turn into a spider quite easily and just looks like something else entirely. Effectively, a wood pile 
but it's not a wood pile. It is actually a spider, which is having to hold itself in a position of a wood pile because it knows that there's a particular prey which comes by to collect wood. No, 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 no. And no, a wood pile no, is no. very, very tempting. Interesting. To a little Timmy who's been sent to get the wood. <laughs> Skipping as he goes. I literally saw a wood pile today. It's like the way that that is fallen together. It just looks like it could be just the eight legs of a spider in waiting to strike the moment someone grabs one of its legs. That's concerning, Ben. Very concerning. <laughs> <laughs> This is the problem. You get D and D brain, and it's stuck forever. <laughs> Everything's a fantasy now. You make mimics regularly. <laughs> yeah, that's They're true. They're getting into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I did sense the irony when it came down to all manner of different bits and pieces, which I've been making and doing, <laughs> just for this. Still loving my absolute favorite part when it comes down to selling those things. Be careful, they bite. <laughs> yep. Well, the best tagline to get someone in. Come on, get closer. We don't bite, they do. Uh... <laughs> I like, we don't bite much. And I'll come across the best one. Absolute best one of all is, uh, come on, get closer. I don't bite anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to I need do to put my egg down. I can't play with my eggs. Ben, leave your eggs alone. Oh, if I was given a penny every time I was told to do that, <laughs> I'd have at least two. Yep. This isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You that. can't. You can't set buy. me up a Susan Schmertz line and not expect me to take it. Yeah. I, I feel Sean needs to read the message in the chat or have the message yeah. in the chat read to him. Ben, read the sh re read the message from yeah. Law in the chat. I don't bite since the incident. The incident. <laughs> so are we saying there is a a wall that has started construction to stop potentially large spiders, lizard folk, and sandstorms. I would say to stop, to, to, stop to, to help alleviate weather and protect from yes. the various yeah. beasts. That, that's a better way of placing it. That is, especially considering that the sand dunes, if there are sand dunes, they will shift all mm -hmm. the time thanks to the wind. So. Having a structure to try and stop the sand dunes makes a lot of sense. More than yeah. the spiders, which are going to just climb over the walls anyway, the lizards, who are going to climb over the wall anyway, and the children, who are going to climb over the wall anyway. And so... What we're learning well, well, is... Kind of they... <laughs> well, it's so long as we know that as soon as they come over the wall, we kill the children on... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the notes the spiders they can run rampant, but the children <laughs> the the notes for sanctuary <laughs> springs. Uh buildings are made of sandstone and typically only a single story tall. Wide thoroughfares covered with a light white cloth allow for shade in the heat. In the centre of town is a clock tower that stands a few stories taller than the surrounding buildings and allows guards to watch people approaching the town. Near the clock tower is a small building, not too different, not too different from the rest of the buildings around the town, but inside stairs lead downwards into a communal bazaar, which is cooled by vents around the edges of the buildings, uh, which pulls cooling air in and feeds it through cooling, misting waters. Heading into the bazaar is free, but people need to sacrifice their weapons at the door, the weapons will be returned upon leaving the bazaar. To help yeah. to help alleviate weather and various beasties, a wall has started construction around the town. 
Sounds good. Yeah. Anything else for Sanctuary Springs? Um, do any people live on the water? We placed it down, but the water is so protected that they won't allow anything to happen to it. Okay. So, I mean, the only other thing which is, once again, sort of placed on that regard is what happens if a person was to break the rules or was to do anything which would compromise the safety or the water? Two things which we placed down as very important for the sake of this sec this sanctuary. Because I don't think they would have the jail. I reckon it would be a case of almost we are going to take you out to the desert, we are going to leave you with nothing. Yeah. It... You've disrespected our rules. You are to... They're... Be effectively, you are going to be abandoned. They've, they've got a very mm -hmm. simple way of punishing you. It's go that way, you don't have anything. Bye. Basically, if you, if your you, only chance of living you, is go that if, way. And if we see you again, something worse will happen. Worse to be determined later, but something worse will happen if you come back. <laughs> yeah, very much. I yeah. think they're... they're penal system is get the fuck out and yeah. stay the fuck out yeah it's a simple penal system but it it's either that well. or we're gonna solve this a lot quicker and you don't like quicker well it's it, it's either I, I, start I, I would say that they wouldn't they wouldn't get it done quicker they, I think they would if if they if someone was to be chucked out and they came back it would be something long and drawn out to As, oh actually that's be, a good point to be a demonstration. A, a demonstration to anyone who might think oh, yeah I'll do that later on no. strapped I'm to the outside of the wall so that yeah. the sand dunes bury you slowly very, very you have been much given that your... sort of thing oh that would be it yeah you strap them to what is made of the wall so far but the sand dunes will either bury you alive or will rip your skin off thanks to the way that the winds and the sands work. Mm -hmm. And that's if you're lucky enough that the animals don't happen you're to come first. by and aren't feeling a bit nibbly. They do like a nibble it's, sometimes. It's been so much <laughs> more convenient since we built this segment of the wall. <laughs> we used to just have to tie Surprise, people yeah. up outside, but now we've got this to tie people to. <laughs> I would love it if it was the case that it wasn't the original design of the wall, but it became handy considering that it, you could easily tie someone to that in comparison to trying to drive a, a, a giant stake into the ground for them to do. Yeah, it's just effort and work. It's just easier just to tie them to the wall or stake them to the wall, glue them to the wall. <laughs> Affix them in However some method do to it. the wall. And the way I'm seeing it is effectively almost moving some of the stones, lifting them up and almost slamming their hands down into it. The amount of force they're pinning them permanently into the wall. You have a chance to effectively get away from it. You are left alone. If you escape from the wall, no one's going to chase you down or anything like that. And if you come back into the building, we're just going to put you back in again. Yeah, You are part of the wall now. In the wall. <laughs> if if you leave the wall and come back again, there you go. It's a wall. It's still here. Exactly. Uh, it's okay. The wall is still waiting for you. Don't worry. God, don't you'd, you'd love for there to be like a bit of comical history on that side of things. Though. Yeah, after the first person who was building the wall accidentally got his hand stuck, we thought that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We uh, should use that more often. And that's why there's a statue over there of a man with no hands. <laughs> dude, dude, that's just the that's just the statue that we haven't finished yet. Don't tell him that. All right. <laughs> Trying to build up a law here. <laughs> that's the that's the that's Venus the de Milo. What's the Venus de Milo? I don't know. Why are you guys talking about penises? <laughs> not, not penises, the Venuses. V the, 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 what, what, what? What's that? Right. What's a it's Venus? a Venus which is very veiny. 
It's a, it's a, oh, it's a penis. <laughs> okay, let us let us move. I feel I feel John's trying to segue <laughs> on top of the penis. <laughs> Let us move our focus. From this Let us move our focus along the uh, along the main trade road and back up to Lawfell, the center of the civilization. Okay. Come for the world building. Stay for the penis jokes. <laughs> yep. You know exactly why you're here. <laughs> Come and enjoy it all. So, Lawfell... Final boss fight, the home of penis jokes. We are not that. We... Sponsored by penis jokes? No. no. New ta we know who we're sponsored by, Sean. We know who. <laughs> we're sponsored by Martin Madrasso and his cheesy bastards. Oh, yes. we, we, we are definitely... There are much better places to go for penis jokes. <laughs> Not with that attitude, John. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, Lawfell. Lawfell. Lawfell is the center of of the civilized races, the the Casimir Alliance, the 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 whatever else we call it. The 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 <laughs> everyone has the, a place in the Ujima Society and the what you call it Brigade. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, all all these things. All the cool people hang out there. All the cool people hang out there. There's, I think that we need, like, there are sort of, in my, in my mind's eye of this big fantasy town, one, it's a metropolis. It's like, it, it's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think there need to be two sort of large standout focal points. One of which is the royal castle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The other of which is insert name of arena here. Okay. Can I add in a third one? Yes. I believe that when it comes down to, once again, for the sake that it is the pinnacle point of two of the cultures which we've created here, that there should be like almost a statuesque tree or two trees in the middle which are sort of binding around each other. One of the avians and one of the elven. Effectively, they couldn't decide which tree was going to be there. And the way that they... The... Uh, the, the Lawfellians basically came up with was okay, fine. You both we will get have it. both. Yeah, exactly. You both get the same area, the same spot, and then in trying to sort of take over and make it theirs look better, they both basically wound each other's trees together, which actually makes it look more like it was designed for unity when it was actually a mistake. I mean, I think it's actually been a fight all along. I think possibly to say to to to, to go on to that. Maybe that's the the was the, the initial spark of the roots. Was they? I they agree. Did this that's exactly they, what oh, I was thinking. You. Exactly. Oh, what I was thinking. And then they both like they both sat there afterwards. And went, you know, you know what? This actually looks pretty good. <laughs> it isn't bad. It's the whole thing was, together, they become stronger. Hmm. Oh, hang on a second. Oh <laughs> well, shit. So I'm gonna. Right. I know I said two, yeah. but I'm gonna throw in. I think we need a church. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say some sort of religious building. There needs, yeah. Like, like a, we need a like cathedral. cathedral or large, large, large worshiping site. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a pantheon yet, but there but should be something here. I like the idea that, depending on how many there are in the pantheon, that each one is represented in windows. Yeah. So the yeah. light comes through, and so everyone has their section <clears> under <throat> their own pantheon's window, essentially. So you're all in together. Um, oh yeah, I like not not like separate churches for each. Yeah, you God. are literally it's One a, a for full multi faith kind of because this place is the center. You either get with the program or you just effectively you we know. can't make a church for each of the pantheons here. 
So yeah. we have agreed and we have made everyone agree that we will make one holy site for them all to come underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A unity site of sorts, yeah. Yeah. Unity church. And then there might be some yeah. Antheans that are more... Maybe it's orientated so that there are some pantheons that are celebrated more in the morning. So the light comes through that side of the building and you each are in your pools of light. And then there are some that are celebrated more in the evening. And then that's when it comes through the other side of the building. So then that's the space almost shifts with the time, I think would be very cool. That would be impressive. The idea that essentially, like you kind of, you bask in the light of your... Your day, yeah, your being. Your um, being. Oh, I, I, I bathe in the sight of my my being every day. Don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> Come, admire me. <laughs> what am I doing, Ben? What am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Ben? <laughs> I don't know. I think I've started trying to start up my own pantheon entirely of me. <laughs> the pantheon of Ben. <laughs> Babe in my lord. God, if ever there was a phrase I don't think I'd be using anytime soon. <laughs> just, I've just chucked another doodle of the kind of bizarre in the desert. My, my uh -oh. thoughts as a side profile. Just... In case that's useful to you. In, in the you what way? In the streaming um, chat. Yeah. So it's kind of side profile looking through the sand. You can see the tall, narrow bit on the top. John, I don't know if you want to show stream. I'll pop yep, it onto the stream. Be. There it is. So you've got your very short city at the top. And then underground, you've got these much taller spaces with the vents that you can see dropping down either side. And I've just put some kind of um, flags to essentially like fabric bits to shaft through the light on the way down that tunnel. So that central section will be completely open to let the air vent up through. Um, and I imagine much like most societies, the more um, money you have, the higher in the tower you live. Because you're still underground, you still get a bit of sunlight. You'd get a really good draft through, perhaps. Mm. Um, maybe the ones that are the expensive ones are the ones that actually have the air vents. Yeah. Um, I also like. But yeah, the that tower. that was my kind of my kind of thinking. Um, and oh, I've got the good, kind yeah. of wall sat around the side um, that you can see the back half of. Yeah, apparently I do the buildings. <laughs> it's almost as if we bought you onto this particular stream with a purpose. No. If I could doodle as quickly on digital art, that would be better, because <laughs> then I could just share it with the stream. But I can't. My brain's just not having the digital stuff. Fair, even there. if it's a case of getting bits and ideas for this one and throwing them in for the next time, it's a wonderful way to get things started, to get things going. Yeah. And if nothing else, we get to show off you getting the spark of inspiration <laughs> from my glory of my beautiful pantheon. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> then put your pantheon away. Ben's tickled himself. <laughs> ben, stop tickling yourself on stream. <laughs> oh, God. This is good. I could just see this. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> um, okay, so I've just put down. I'm not, I'm not going to mention what I tickled what, what tickled me the other day when we were playing Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. I've it. I've put down Unity Cathedral, mm -hmm. a place of worship for all members of the Pantheon, with a stained glass window for each of the gods, for each god or goddess, placed so that each member of the Pantheon is shared with equal yeah. time in the light. Sense. Um, people, what can name things? What are we naming the arena? So, for the for the sake of people who may not have been here last time, we have 
an arena that is in Lawfell. It is a grand adaptive arena that can reform its playing field based on the display being put on, whether that be a Battle of the Bards or races, uh, mm -hmm. races that constantly shift the environment of the races or gladiator fights. Mm. What 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 is that place called? The I'm 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 I'm, I'm getting up a I'm getting up a generator. <laughs> it, the Iron Wing Arena. Ooh. The Hallowed Stadium. I don't know anyone who would want this one. The Dragon Tooth Arena. Nah. I uh, know. Possibly go for that. <laughs> the Hemorrhage Coliseum. Jesus. No. Nope. <laughs> that that <laughs> ain't it. Um. Uh, Ironbound Coliseum. I like the Chaos Coliseum. I quite like the Iron hmm? Wing Coliseum. Or the Iron Wing Arena. I must the say, Iron the Iron Wing Arena does sound good. Uh, some some of these names really don't work. I, I quite like the Iron Wing one though. A grand adaptive arena called Iron Wing Arena that can reform its playing field uh, based on the display being put on. Yada yada yada. I do kind of actually like an idea of that one being it being Iron Wing as a, a almost a combination between the ones who created it effectively. It was mainly a part of the avian design, but it was thrown and made better by the the artifices of the area. So yeah. thus, they there's the iron wing to sort of pull the two together. Together, yeah, I like that. Would idea. it be something like Iron Wing's Fortitude, or something? So it's not got arena written in it, mm. so that then in the world people would go well what's that because as I soon as you put a reader on the end we battle at iron, iron wings Wing. glory iron mm -hmm. wings valor iron wings resolve i think resolve, resolve iron wings resolve. i like resolve I like resolve. resolve sounds has resolve has a nice sound to it. I've got to say, the Iron Wings resolve, Agreed. which kind of feels like it goes in for all of them as well. What does the castle look like? A big old fucking castle. <laughs> I was thinking on this side of things. I would, I've placed it in my head like rings, effectively. Okay. So, every member of the unity, every member of the, the the groups which have come together has placed in, and effectively end up with these different architectural rings slowly moving their way in, very much what you would expect when it comes out to seeing a fortitude anyway, with the main building hidden in between everything else and you have to work your way into it. But making it into a design which can be seen from everywhere, risen up enough that you can see these rings working their way to the the grand structure in the middle which sort of pulls inspiration from each of the areas together but not necessarily holding on to anyone in particular are we almost thinking that the rings as you, as you approach the castle the rings are also like the embassies uh of the particular races so if you've got an issue you go to that's your that's not a bad ring. idea actually I hadn't even thought of it that way but that's a damn good idea to add on top of it I'm I'm also curious to see what's happened in the yeah I know I've just seen that side of things there. just going to throw we this talk... one into the stream as well because I can do this <laughs> uh, here is here is Law's uh oh wow design of the, the roots 
brooch, which also features a spinning disc that you can look through to see if the other person is a member of the the secret organization. And and also it's stolen from Sean, so <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, no, no, of course not. <laughs> law, law giving credit, but also but no, no, expanding no, no. upon the idea. <laughs> Oh, that, Collaboration. That is beautiful. Is it bad that I look at that and go, yeah, that would get stuck in my hair? <laughs> 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 I'm so used to looking at everything and figuring out whether I would or wouldn't be able to wear it by how long it would take me to get it back out of my hair. I feel that's my favourite part of the whole thing is that it is the moment where you sort of take a look and you're like, I'm sure that in the fantasy costume, I could put that one on as well. Because <laughs> it does sort of have that fantasy yield that you could quite happily put that on and not no one would pay too much attention to it, show of, that's pretty. Mm. <laughs> oh no, it definitely gets stuck in your hair, Lord. There's no denying that one. Yeah, It would look pretty while it's there, but it would definitely get stuck in your hair. <laughs> oh, come on, that's going to get stuck it in did. my hair and I've got a lot less hair than both of you. I, I Firstly, I think I'll be alright. But... <laughs> We're going to have Velcro on the back. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have jewelry stuck, stuck in my probably. hair over the weekends and now I'm tired. Probably. <laughs> I like the idea that that as well could be essentially almost like a hat pin. Um, there's so many, like, it something that could be a brooch, could be a hairpiece, hat you pin. You place that anywhere. Could get stuck in your beards too, guys. Not the beard! No! Go, save the beard! Have we not learned anything from Gimli? Not the beard! Never <laughs> the beard! And everything will get stuck in my beard. It's, it's, it's so... There's so much. There's so much to get tangled We don't in. call it getting stuck uh, in the beard. We call it lunch for later. Anything. It is not clear. It it did turn out that there was a large amount of uh, chocolate yogurt in my beard after I finished dinner tonight. That's a beer that needs to be eaten. Yeah. Uh, who, who? Me? I don't know. <laughs> Mine, not quite yet. I can do the nice curly. Uh, I mean, I mean Law might be talking I, I about John's have... magnificent beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you there, Sean. Yeah, you, lol. That doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone <laughs> needs beard beads, clearly. <laughs> I'm just going to stick a bead to my chin and be like, there we go. <laughs> uh, can't it by but like, it has in, like, right in the centre, like the... Like yeah, that, like it's just the, here. Like, is it the yeah, is it the lead singer of Disturbed who has that? Who just has the, the little <laughs> just the one little one. Yeah, it's... but it's just gonna be a bead. There's there's gonna be no rest of the beard. Just just the bead. Yeah, I find it really hard to find. I've, I've been trying to find like good beard beads for years, and I've never been able to find good ones. Sad Ooh. times. Sad times. Boo indeed. No. Nope. Boobs. Ben's Ben's working hard over there. Are you trying? Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to finish the sentence. <laughs> this, is the, this, is the rest, this is the rest of the stream now. This is. Yeah. I have a lot of family who have long beards, and when I was very little, I fondly remember putting beads, bows, and ba braids in them. Says Law. Nice. I'll have to grow mine out then. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, it's like I've wanted braids. It's like, but it's like the only place I've been able to find that does decent beads is the same place I bought. I got this uh, Mjolnir from and one of the rings from, um, which is like a place in Sweden, which they charge a fair bit for what they are. And it's like, you know, yeah. as much as they really cool, as much as they really cool, and I really want them, I'm not gonna pay like. 30 odd pounds for one bead. And probably not. And that's before shipping. Yep. Anyway. All my dad's so, friends leaving barbecues with, like, the yes. beast with all the bows. 
Yeah, well, uh, is I think that, that the wooden bead nicely. from Comic Con? That is the spare bead we found at Comic Con. Nice. <laughs> and there it shall remain forever. <laughs> Just say, yeah. <laughs> That's been on the floor. It, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I have a feeling I'm going to be attacked over the weekend and I'm going to be coming out with beads all over the place. <laughs> I, I, I require bit. photos if your beard gets filled with bows. <laughs> just, just put it out there. I'm pretty I like sure that John's typing else, away. <laughs> perceive that B and John are going to the same place. If John sees me with tons of bows in my beard, there is a guarantee. There are going to be pictures. <laughs> Law says, "Yes, Ben, prepare to be decorated." Be careful! I have a dingle hopper, and I'm not afraid to use it. Is it? Is it, is it weird that I, I read that in the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Is it <laughs> no, it's perfect. It's... Yeah. It's a little bit of an unusual voice for law, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it checks I, I, out. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the fact it was said by law. I was simply saying that just the words being said. This is for the sake of showing off random bits and pieces. I have no idea whether the camera picked that one up. Trying to get that one ready for the sake of going off the con, but I think that went out the window with the whole Simpsons Luke Skywalker for the use the yep. forks. Use the forks. That is the thing. It's amazing what you can do with a cutlery set. <laughs> yeah. If you're me and mad. It it's amazing what you could do with a with a cutlery set, some sticky bag plastic, and four tons of na napalm. <laughs> so you know my next project, do you? <laughs> okay, so I've got Unity Cathedral. Yep. We've got the castle mm -hmm. surrounded by various rings drawing inspiration from the various races in the Alliance. The rings deal with the political matters deal uh deal with the political matters let's go with to do with that race before leading to an elaborate castle with various spires which houses the royal family. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. Just going to throw in, and that should be tagged, the Alliance of Casimir. Uh, near the centre of the town is a pair of trees, one crafted by the Avians, the other by the Elves, which are neighbouring and have grown together into each other. Uh, originally formed as competing, this led to the formation of the Roots. Yeah, uh, that's which cool. I'm so glad that we've actually now come across the point of literally <laughs> from creating the roots to this is where they started. Uh, yeah. The spark, the spark that inspired it. We also have the grand adaptive arena called the Iron Wings Resolve. Yeah. Is it, sorry, is it called Iron Wings Resolve or the Iron Wings Resolve? I think Iron Wings Iron Resolve, Wings but I think Resolve. it needs yeah. the the. Yeah. Uh, that can reform and stuff that I had previously. Yeah, I think you should put some words in there, not just... <laughs> uh, do we want to throw anything else into Lawfell at the moment? I think if you're going to have a settlement that large, it's going to need plenty of farmland around it. Oh, yes. I agree. Um, I think and that's all one of thing that... that we did talk about beforehand. We would literally have a Literal, once again, not necessarily rings, but it would be great farmland around the outside. It's because this is a place of basic agriculture for the sake of survival, everything else which can be dragged in gets dragged in. But there would definitely be sprawling farmland on the outside because it's got perfect yeah. Greenland for it, which would also lend to the smaller villages and such forth, which would sort of yeah. stretch out into them. As a, as a potential thing to rip off from Waterdeep, um, do we want to put in uh, let me find the name of it before I start talking about it the only portal? <laughs> no uh, the underdark yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, Xanathar we're going to have Xanathar <laughs> <laughs> uh 
I'm sorry about that first moment ago. I realized me rubbing my face and beard was not exactly perfect for the stream, but did realize I kind of need to do that. Been under the sun for a it's while. Okay, I'm sure. To... I'm sure the stream enjoyed it. No, we didn't have the dramatic music, you know. Judah, in a slide. <laughs> he, he wasn't. He wasn't holding a diet coke. How can he? <laughs> If there wasn't like wind blowing through his hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, John still won't buy my artificial wind. I don't know why. <laughs> whilst John's searching for what John is searching for, with these rings <laughs> yeah. of town, we could do with some walkways through that are the kind of. Um, where everything mixes so like you've got that say that central bazaar you could have mm. some main like thoroughfares through to the center i don't know how many you want oh dotted goodness. around yeah. but they could be dotted with loads of tiny little carts selling different things and it's where everyone comes to sort of do a, a really good bulk of trading well this is what, yeah i agree with you entirely this place should be a lot more of an open area especially in comparison to our fishing town Mm. This is a one that is definitely not a place of industry. This is almost a place of, it's at least not presenting itself as a place of industry. It's trying to present itself as a place where you can come together. It is that unity. So it wants the outside places to be open and large, to almost welcoming, like open arms of sorts. Mm. There still be the back alleys and all that side of things, but they're a lot more sparse in comparison. Because, as you say, yeah. this is a place where they want to have markets running down almost every street. They want to let people come out and congregate however they might like, within reason. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where it is literally designed for the people. It is designed for all people to feel welcome there. It is meant to be almost like a, a shining beacon example of what it should look like, which does offer such a wonderful concept of the the seedy underbellies of one the government there who are treating their workers terribly to make mm -hmm. sure it looks brilliant in which case the people could be under trodden but not allowed to tell you and as well as that the incredibly seedy seedy underbelly of it all which is we want the upstairs to look nice that makes the marks so much easier to get at because pleasant places you put your guard down. Yeah. Would you do rings of different cultures or is it rings of hierarchy in society? Now, that is one of the bits which sort of gets me because when it comes down to the, obviously this being an element of unity of sorts, I kind of have one place if I was going to have it that the rings are almost offset as well. So it's never a case of one seems to be higher up than another, but they're instead tilted. So at one point, one ring will get up higher than another, and another one, another point is someone else is going to get up. So they all get a high point, they all have a low point, as in mm. they are all equal in their rings. That's where I'd kind of wondered that if you had this like central cathedral... Um and the noble household sitting in the middle if you had then it would go outwards if you had each road and then each like segment is its own culture so then the segments blend together in those Let's roads in between yeah, yeah. and then you've got the kind of the higher bit of the higher nobles and all of the because they get to survey over everything going down out through to the farmers make uh, everything run that makes a lot of sense um, when it comes down to it as i said the only thing which i was sort of debating of was with effectively are we will we try and king arthur the rings or do you make them a prominent feature point in which case they have to sort of be shown and sort of work up levels because i've got one image in my head of almost like a rose design where where the rings come up and down and almost creates like a flourish pattern but mm. it, it's not one which I can see as being as practical. Whereas the rings make sense because it is a bit like the rings of a keep. You would have yeah. to work your way through them. 
it could be that you know like the um like tudor rose where you've got the kind of the four petals yeah. and then you've got the next ones offset the other way it could almost step down like keeps do but offset with sort of some sort of petal rotation to it maybe well the other thing was born on the lines of thinking about whether there is an element of culturalness coming into it as well where it we've got many different races and one thing which never really sort of looked into is different cultures and how they would perceive things like for instance there are some which would not might think that being the highest point is the, having the the regal nature whereas others might be on the lines of being the first which you see so in which case if you're the first which you receive then that is the most stunning one of them all in which case that is the prominent feature we also have and like between the <laughs> avians who would be up high is better because that is who we are you also have the dwarves who are prefer to be lower what, yeah why the fuck are you up there <laughs> come down here yeah in which case some bits could be split differently to where some more like i don't know as a more standard human type race would be your standard you get a whole slope you have the top you have the bottom you have the farmland you have the high up nobles it could be that the avians and the dwarves between them have two segments the avians get the top chunk and the dwarves have underneath it maybe uh um the other thing one thing um, the thing i was trying to find the name of was a men's farm uh, okay. which is basically <clears throat> in Waterdeep it is a farm that they sentence the criminals to ah. it's, uh. it's, a, it's a farm for people who are serving hard labour sentences not necessarily serving uh, you know murder. mass murder sentences because you don't want that person dealing yeah. with your food no 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 but things like Oh well, you need to go and work hard labor for a few years. You're gonna be useful. So go do some farm. Yeah. What? So what have you been sent here for? Mass poisoning. <laughs> um. I don't think we want you here. <laughs> Mind you, that does open up a wonderful bit of putting the uh, the ne'er do well to use. Yeah. So it might not necessarily be the farmland, or the, depending on what on earth they've been called in for, their hard labour could be justified around exactly what they're doing. I mean, the so, other for instance, the the other option mm -hmm. for for hard labour, you know, <clears throat> we have discussed a place where the labour is not great, the the working conditions are yeah. not good. It's that other town exactly. that we started the stream with. You well, are, the thing. You when are it comes sentenced down to, to labour in Vector's Haven. It is one of those bits where, amazingly, I was end up thinking of that as we were talking and des designing it through, but this sounds a lot like the beginning of Les Miserables. <laughs> the whole look down section is like, yeah, actually, that would be the perfect mm -hmm. place to send those kind of criminals. It's like, yeah. no, no, you're going to serve your sentence there. You're going to be it useful. It could exactly. be your your different layers, and it could be that yeah, the the harder of a criminal you are, the worse exactly. jobs you get in that place. But actually, so, realistically, if you stole a loaf of bread, you and might just go and see Jonathan. You just <laughs> just go and work <laughs> the fields to repay in your time. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, the the the, yeah. the what the worse it is, the more. Likely is you're going to be going to Vector's Haven. You're going to be put into the yeah. the worst, most dangerous factory they have. At some point, and... you're clearing out the funnels that yeah. just are still bellowing with smoke, and you're just in there trying to scrape the crap off of yeah. them. Like yeah, you 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 might be able to serve your sentence and get through it, or or but you you might lose an arm or you know. yeah. I know something going around with that location for the sake of. Yeah, we can only shut this furnace off for so much time. You have that time to clean it. If you don't clean it in time, well, well. Back on. if you yeah. want out, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
another side to things of of uh, some of the stuff that was being discussed while I looked up those notes and and made some of these notes. Mm -hmm. I don't think Lawfell needs the seediness. Mm, no, I think that the fact that it it's one of those things where Lawfell doesn't need seediness, where there would be an element of seediness there. The only way I could see seediness being there is it being a a hidden seedy nature there. I I think because pretty much the whole point is that yeah. Oh, yeah, we've we've got a lot of the places that are the 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 seedy nasty. Fantasy right, I'm not talking. Happens. I'm not talking that kind of seedy. I'm talking more like. The element which you kind of expect to see in the middle of a city is more the high-end CD. We're not here to try and brutishly beat up or anything like that. It's more psychological play. The yeah, high-end, in, the intelligence CD. -er. Like pawn men and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, like, I, supp so I suppose that, that, that sort could, of... In a, in a, the, in a yeah. city, in a city, you'll never not see mm -hmm. this. It's, exactly. it's impossible. There'll be yeah. something there along the lines. Uh, there'd be drifters, there'd be con artists, there'd be people trying to on old ladies out of all their money. I think, all that kind of stuff. I think at the very not least not like with money or anything. With, like that. with how with how low Vectis Haven is. You know, we we need somewhere in the world that is equally that Oh god, yeah, like, and I think the another element to it. Otherwise, the entire, the entirety of the place is just really it's... fucking shitty. The other side is when it comes down to I can see as well in places like Vector Saber that you also get the other element. It's the yin yang side of things. That there's always the good, there's always the bad. Even in Vector Saber, I can imagine there being those uh, particular practitioners of one of the pantheon which we haven't decided who are. Almost going to be like our version of plague doctors mm. going around and trying to yeah, free. They'd, they'd your, be... We're going to save your soul, as it were. Yeah, there'd be people trying to help uh, yeah. humble them. Sorry, At the same time, I, I see them like deaf clerics, but nonetheless, when it comes down to it, is we're here to save your soul. We might not be able to save your body, but or at the your very soul least, at least. Uh, at, at the very least. You sort of need Lawfell or possibly other places that are closer to Vectis Haven. But there at least needs to be a certain element of the people that live in Vectis Haven that are, we just need to make a few more payments and we can move to exactly Lawfell or <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can move from Vectis Haven to Schittsburg. Oh, <laughs> glory. It is that whole point that Lawfell should absolutely be the pinnacle point, the place which people want to go to. But there's yeah. a whole element that it doesn't mean that you take away all, all these, the CD underbelly, because there is the CD underbelly that's always going to be there. It's just nowhere feel, near as prominent. I feel like Lawfell becomes trying to climb the social ladder. And so it might be just a little bit backstabby here and there. Yeah. And like it's all very subtle because you can't be seen to be backstabbing because that will lower your social graces well, this, this, I think and I it's, can so it's see that, that much more like it's just those little bits it's a little bit gossipy it's a little bit um it's it's a little just, bit just because everyone's trying you can see where you could get to and everyone's like oh it's, you've got into the good city now how do you get higher in the good city it, kind of that sort of it's a little oh, bit that Barsing up. say. It is a little Barsing say. But also there is no war in Barsing say. Oh, there's also a little bit of Days of the Dead. For the sake of there'd be people out there who you would hire for the sake of we need this, we need that, and it's the CD things which no higher up can possibly be seen to do. So you hire the CD underbelly who believe that they're working their way in. They then get rejected by the moment when they start asking too much. They then get sent off to their... Okay. You could end up with a group of the rejected. The ones who were rejected from Lawfell and are now making their plans while are currently stuck. 
they just need to work their way back out and then god only knows what will happen then so we've discussed vectus haven we've discussed a little bit staros we've discussed lawfell sanctuary and sunspire mm -hmm. mm -hmm. now craven wing is going to be very similar to sunspire okay because it's more or more or less the same race right it, yeah, you don't worry. We we didn't really build on Staros. We didn't. We we discussed it we, a little. We discussed uh, the fact that it's gonna have, it, it's gonna be more tidal yeah. than Vectis Haven, that they are gonna potentially have a a sort of sandbar that people run aground yeah. on, and then they drag the ships into the structure. Basically, when it came down to the main reason we haven't really touched on is that we already had a fair idea of what Staris was going to look yeah. like in, in an architectural kind of look. And we're obviously, this stream is trying to decide which areas would have what kind of uh, architectural design. For, former pirates law. Mm. Former pirates and potentially oh. other sailors. Let's just be oh. where they are. Former pirates and current <laughs> pirates as well. Um, so, left on the map of places to discuss, I think the two forts we can very much. I think they're very much going to be bug standard forts. They're, fort, they're really. forts. Like, yeah. What's the them. dark to the right hand side? Corrupted Badlands. Okay. Uh, Basically, it's the Badlands which are slowly creeping inland and seemingly aiming for the Temple of Gargaxian. It, yeah, it makes it's fine. It's fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. Uh, again, we don't have a name for those beyond what is currently on my list as Corrupted Badlands to the East. Okay. Yeah, we didn't really come up with a name for any of that, Buster. Um I think we should have at least a couple, maybe a settlement or two, which have been literally corrupted areas within there, but we haven't really come up with that yet. Uh, well, before we get to that and adding adding some new settlements, I've got we've got Stone's Grave that is mm -hmm. on the map, which is the Dwarven capital. And then we also have the elves and the halflings. Do we want to quickly touch on those? Like I know it, it's it's twenty to eleven at the moment. I to be fair, we started on the elves anyway, considering that they're in comparison to the mm. the sunspire and the the avians. Perhaps we can at least have a tackle onto them, and then we can always. Uh, see what it's like time-wise afterwards. So my notes on the elves at the moment is the elves live somewhere. Well, that narrows yeah. it down. So, but when it comes down to it, we've, we've, we're aiming those to be more elemental now, aren't we? Well, I think the, the elves we've discussed now sort of live I think in trees that have like you have a tall bit of tree and then a house with walkways and and things in the canopies of the trees. I must say, for a moment there, I was thinking of going a little bit more complex with it, but at the same time, it makes their inert magic far too powerful. Because uh, my my idea, which I sort of came in, was effectively the way that they they build, in the way that their magic works, it almost. The aim is never to affect the forest or the, the land which they're in. And so instead they build into the trees themselves, but effectively have a, a magic which allows them to shrink into the size of the building. But the only thing is giving that ability to shrink and to expand is a bit... Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's problematic for gameplay purposes. Exactly. My so, thought is yeah. kind of avatar world tree how they live inside so actually oh, when you forest, almost don't see that they're there 
And that is sort of all pulled in with one tree is the tree. And then you sort of start to see a few, like at night, some of the trees have slit windows in them and you notice the glow. Um, Yeah. And you suddenly might realise that actually some of the vines are actually walkways. But they're built atop these really chunky vines. Um, oh, I like that. But when it comes down, you can't tell that they're walkways until someone walks over them. Yeah. I like that. So it's kind of got that avatar sort of... And so the avians... Living with the nature rather than trying to change nature for what you need it. Yeah. The avians live amongst like the nothing. trees. The elves live literally in the trees. Yeah. I, I was going to say, in, like, in to build on the whole, you know, not trying to shape it, like, nothing is, like, carved out. It's all grown around. Yeah. It's all yeah. natural curve and, like, you know, it's a hollow that's been grown into the tree that they live in. It's what's it's g- like... giving that almost, like, druidic feeling that almost talking to the plants yeah. or guiding the plants have created a design very much like what we were saying with the avians as well. So, which considering that their rivalry is based on the growing of their trees, makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Well, their rivalry is based on a number of things, but one of those things is their tree sculpting uh, abilities. The other ones were the Chocolate Egg Wars of 72. It's it, it's apparently, they, they have that sort of argument of the two people who are very close in the same sort of thing. I'm the better one at the. I'm the better one at this very unique thing that we both happen to do. Um. What is the place called? It doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> what 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 is the the. What is Elven homeland, hometown, main town, capital city, called? In what? <laughs> in this. It. Oh, what is our? I, th- I thought you were asking. Sorry. I, th- I thought you were like saying just like uh, name one from the thousands <laughs> of places that they yeah. have elves with cities. What? What? What is <laughs> our elven town called? We've got a. They they live in. Trees. They live in a forest. That is. You wouldn't notice that they live in it until you get close enough and then you notice the vines in the trees have been tied and shaped together into it into walkways between buildings. You might notice the the slitted windows in the trees. I think having something with forest in the name is a good shout. It needs to be uh, within Torgalad. A... Torgalad. Torgalad. So T A U R hyphen G A L A D. Torgala. Which is forest tree in Sylvian. Yeah. That works. Well, I thought we were throwing a little twist on it with the E. <laughs> yeah. But talk a lot. Actually, I think the glide makes it sound a bit better, actually. But for the sake of Elvish, let's throw in a little hint towards a great creator when it comes down to the elves. Let's throw it towards Token. Pendragon yeah. Nomad says, Did someone say chocolate? <laughs> No. Oh, no. No. Um not at all. <laughs> any other any other things on the elves or Torgalad in general? Um if the elves are one with nature, is there some sense of trickery to the surrounding forest to those who don't know it? I'm kind of thinking along the lines of Hobbit in the forest and them sort of getting a little bit turned around. Are there some sort of 
I mean, if they are mainly Plant druidic or... in nature, then sort of talking to the plants and maybe manipulating them would make some sense. Are they... Is it kind of the opposite of you get lost in the forest? It's more a... You... Well, they adapt the forest around you. You don't so you... get lost in the forest. It almost tries to just keep turning you out. Yeah, it, as it you're trying to get into the center, it's like, bit. nope, off you go. <laughs> well, no. What if it, what what if it's more like instead of that, you get through it really quickly as long as you're not going there to chop it down. Like, it's not a bad it, idea I, at all. If you, I feel, I feel they would be a people that would that. They they would have scouts and things throughout the forest yeah. to try and find anyone trying to get in, and yes. would would quickly first watch you, see what you're doing, and then if it's of if it's obvious you're not trying, well if, if it's if it's uncertain whether you're trying to whether you've got malicious purposes or not, they would then con like make contact with you, and, yeah, you know, appear before you and be like. Fuck you doing? Fuck you doing here? Fuck. If it, if it's clear you're just traveling through the forest, you suddenly find yourself suddenly through the forest that looks like it was going to take some time to get through. The way suddenly really? clears itself, like shockingly easily. Yeah, and if you're known, the forest just lets you through essentially. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a friend, if you're yeah. like, a, like yeah, if you're a friend, you're like a friend of the city, a friend of the town. Yeah, you're you're, you're straight there. You're yeah. Honestly, yeah. If you speak French, you may enter. Uh... <laughs> I I kind of like the idea that it's not necessarily that the forest is malicious unless you attack it. Um. But it is the day. Like the idea of sort of adapting almost like treants and ants. Mm. But it's more a case of the forest which the elves live in, or their part of that forest is alive, and it is known and protects itself. And maybe well, I think that, that was something we've already discussed: is that the elves are almost plant people. Oh yeah, and yeah, as they yeah. Grow old, and as they grow older, they eventually become the tree. And it also in case, it also yeah. plays into the the tree revenant things that we've discussed yeah. with having yeah like so they kind of face of bow it para <laughs> parasitic tree elf mm. um zombie things that have like tree that suddenly you're, you're walking through a dead desiccated swampy bog forest and suddenly the tree that's like gnarled and bent over cracks and splits open and a elven figure is in it mm. and like the tree suddenly starts attacking you like a fish yeah yeah that could i think that helps differentiate the elves from the avians as well yeah i'd agree with you there like the elves are much more one with nature are literally part of the forest essentially well, the, the avians side... dwell in a forest and are very in tune with it, but not. Especially also connected. adds on, especially for the sake of the avians have been adapting and twisting and making their own nature, as it were. Mm. Whereas the elves are no, no, we live in nature, however it wishes to grow, not how we decide it should. Yeah. And almost, yeah. we will help it where it asks. Yes. Um, as opposed to, and, we and, want to and, make it better because our will intends it. And in return, the forest will provide for us as well. Like in, if we if we desperately need new housing, it will try to grow to accommodate us. Yeah, it, it like, essentially like, 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 like follows the whole out thing some of, of it, its like, existing trees. Yeah, it, it's the whole, the elves are in a fully, like, symbiotic relationship with the forest. Yes. Yeah. You know, they provide for the forest, the forest provides for them. Yeah. Yeah. They can all bathe in that, never mind. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, I also have... So we've got one... Actually, let's quickly look at the map. Is is this Torgalard? Hang on, I'm not looking. So this is the... Where? This is the area of forest here. I feel I feel it wouldn't be that close to Vector's Haven. Mm-hmm. No. Are we gonna I think go it's gonna be here. I obviously don't Can have... it be can it be a section of that big forest? It could be I, a I section have a feeling of it this should large be... forest. I think it would be effectively in the middle of that that the densest part of the largest forest would be where it would yeah. be. Uh yeah. I need to f remember how to put the label in for replace. Uh, you just pull out the hammer and nail and just pin it straight on. I've got a tree. <laughs> uh, we have we have tree. I don't know. I'd uh, say uh, yeah. Go for that sort of different coloured tree as well, sort of just to really highlight where uh, they are. City, capital, city, city. That's what I want. City, capital, capital, city, city, capital, capital, city, city, capital, 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 capital. We've lost Sean. <laughs> also, the uh, the city goes underneath the trees. Ah. Oh, okay. That's a problem. That's not helpful at all. Can you get a picture of a tree which could potentially sit on top of the others? Uh, I'm seeing this one is them living in a giant tree and having a symbiotic relationship, effectively. If we um, put that one on after stream, we can play around with these settings. That's true. Oh, wait. I found the settings. Ah. I found the settings, guys. Don't worry. I've placed the city of Torgalard. Yay. And I'm going to add the add the map note, which is a... It's a, it's a City, and there's the label. It's tall. So I had a uh, Galade. I can't remember what the game was called. I I hollowed out a massive tree, and I built all sorts of rooms and things within it. And there were just staircases that ran, and then one went kind of across diagonally through the center, and then they continued up around the edges. And it was all just in a big spiral. I like the idea that. Um, Maybe some people have their own smaller tree, but actually then there are like community trees where there's because they're just so big um, that you can live loads of people in them. Yeah. Um, but actually they're not like really, they're just sleeping space and a little bit of trading space yeah. uh, because at the rest of the time they're out outside doing stuff. Doing the yeah. healthy business. Yeah. There is there is the sign for Torgalard. Cool. I have saved the map. That was what that ping sound was. Um, oh. I've got a a map note or a, a note in Obsidian that we need somewhere where the halflings live. Okay. Uh, I believe we've discussed that it's cosy, it's it's sort of farmlandy, it's somewhere they don't I'm... tend to leave. I would be placing them out in the greens a little bit more then. I'm almost inclined, if it's sort of cosy, that maybe it would be up slightly more towards the foot of the mountains. I would agree with you. So it's got Especially maybe a little have... bit of chill in the air, so they like that kind of cosy, so, making their houses yeah. warm. Uh, their own like little tiny stream which comes through. Not really big enough for them to do much with it, but enough that they could dish from again, maybe a little bit from that side sort of, of things. Big enough for them, but not big enough that a, a exactly. bigger town is going to spring up around it. Yeah. Oh, and Tanny has a name. It's Tanny. Oh. Okay, Ooh, what's the name place. for the halflings, please? 
That's Honeywell. Cute. That is a cute name. And immediately my head jumps to the beginning of a children's program with gum kids to the little hobbits of Honeywell. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the halflings of Honeywell. A small stream runs past the town. Not what are they? What are the hobbits of Honeywell doing today? Oh, human sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? It looks like they found a non-believer in their midst. And, <laughs> and now they're after Sean for giving away all of their secrets. <laughs> they shall never find Sean. However, they shall never find Sean. But he's the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> they're the only one that can break the fourth wall. <laughs> but he's the narrator. And he's currently looking through his sniper rifle three miles away. He and... And they know they can't go after him if they know what's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, you learned that one from Bingo, who is currently feet still sticking out of the stream. <laughs> Everyone knows not to go near Bingo. Everyone knows not to go near Bingo. <laughs> That's why they won't bury him. So the they know. the halfling entry now reads: "Stick to their lovely homes, which are located in Honeywell." Some rare halflings go on adventures. You need an in after located. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> it was just. Oh god, I would love to do a pull of massive reverse on this one and just sort of say, though, with a warning, though, if they do, there is a wizard who is quite adamant <laughs> to put them back. <laughs> Yeah. We're literally pulling the reverse. The reverse is obsessed. Obsessed. No, 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 no. no, no. You say it's the reverse Gandalf, basically. Yeah. It's like his life depends (laughs) on making sure. I would love to put a whole story on that one, (laughs) Lady, just to say. There is a wizard who is dedicated, might even send adventurers to go and reclaim does he, the harbor. Does, oh, does he also like put, put on firework shows at Honeywell? <laughs> yeah. Like this is the reason yeah, he was there. The way to keep them entertained to stay there. They need yeah. a little bit of excitement, but too much is going to kill them. So they have to stay in Honeywell. Are they like those goats that when you startle them, yeah. they just freeze and tip over? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, please put in the reverse candle, please. I'm not noting it down reverse yet. But... Just, just put brackets, reverse grand- <laughs> Gandalf, just, just, yeah, just, just as a just reminder. Do that. Just, to con- just to confuse the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At some point later, we'll be like, sorry, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, Thank you. Stone's Grave. <laughs> Heart of the Dwarven Stone- Empire. Stone's Grave is the heart of the Dwarven Empire. It is deep within the mountain range. Mm-hmm. Um, they are primarily crafters and creators, fashioning items from the living rock or potentially the inert parts left behind around the living stone. Uh, do do we have anything to add about the the about Stone's Grave? Anybody got any ideas for... If they live in the mountain. Yes. Is... If the stone is living, there's got to be some ebb and flow of spaces. You know how rivers shift? Mm. And, like, slowly they create the shorter route and create, like, the Oxbow Lakes and stuff. Mm. They're almost, in my head, needs to be, rather than the Lord of the Rings dwarves that hollow everything out and they're beautiful, open spaces, I get another sense, if they're sort of in amongst the living stuff, that maybe the living things reclaim bits here and there, and so they're digging out other bits as they go. Um, There would definitely be... Let's face it, the place in that is basically fascinated by rock entirely. Mm. So, effectively, almost anything that base would sort of grab their attention. 
So I can certainly see that one in effect working quite nicely. You know how like lava when it flows over sort of just gradually rolls over stuff and it just gets stuck underneath as it goes. I can almost see the living rock growing kind of like that. And so occasionally maybe they just need to shift some chairs and stuff out of the way in the dining room because the living wall's coming back in. <laughs> um, I do have an idea of sort of play on... Um... Once again, almost Easter eggish, sort of to a point, going with uh, something which came from Junji Ito, which was also referenced in Steven Universe. When I made that point, some I think a lot of people might be sort of latching onto what I'm suggesting. Of effectively, you can tell where the dwarves have been because there are dwarf-shaped holes, literally walking into the mountain sides <clears throat> until they find a place where they want to core it out. Tani says, In... fucking love Junji Ito. <laughs> OMG, Ben, no. <laughs> that. That. Just that. Just that. <laughs> just that. <laughs> one is fuck up. Just, just that one is fuck up. Oh, you're yeah, fucked up. <laughs> It's it's one of those bits where it's a, a really creepy story. I'm not going to go into details because it's so. I think people need to see. Danny might disagree, Ta but yeah. <laughs> Danny might have seen. Yeah. I, I but... don't know if I've seen because I know I watched the recent. Um, yeah, I'm going to make another Genito series, <laughs> and there was something in that that's. But uh, as I said, there was an element from the Steven Universe which sort of made a hint of that, and I want to take more like the Steven Universe side of it, rather than the Juno Itu, which uh, is basically when it comes down to it, is there are these sort of like dwarf-shaped holes, but if you follow them in, they actually lead to places. Basically, they've taken interest in the rock for a reason, they've gone in and they find an area to tunnel out. When it comes down to their living rock, it's effectively, they've all come out from that area, leaving some multiple dwarf shapes coming out of where they come from and it is still a place which they will go back to again and again but it is one of those things so not quite as disastrous as the, the main <laughs> story there Tammy don't worry that'll be later but <laughs> but yeah when it comes down to the whole bit of effectively taking the shortest route the easiest route and the easiest route is to in some cases where it looks like they've literally just walked straight through but why carve more than you need to? Why take more than you need to? When all you need to do is make sure you've got enough room for yourself to get through. Mm. Which I think is a damn good mentality for ones going through rock. Yeah. Unless it's a rock they want or they know that other people want and they can get things which they want for the sake of the rock which they don't really want. Because who really needs the shiny rock? They don't need a shiny rock. We, we trade the shiny rock and we get the thing that we really want instead. Yeah, it's it's the Minecraft mentality where you're just exactly. trying to go and find the open areas. And they pretty much the only thing they really care about is they just sort of dig through their shape. That's all they need. So that's all they care about. Up until they find the points where they need to open it up. If if anyone wants to know, apparently, uh, Ben is referring to the Enigma <laughs> of Amigara Fault from Junji Ito. At least Tani <laughs> says that's what you're referring to. I... I, can I believe that's what is. Yeah, Tani is correct in that is what the thing. I'm making a great presumption that you. I'm making a great presumption that you have got it on the head because I'm terrible with names, so I'm not going to try and confirm or deny it. But yeah, when it comes down to the story, let alone is it, so much stuck. But yeah, as I say, is taking more with that whole element from the Steven Universe rather than from the incredible horror psychological horror that is that one I think it works quite nicely not too overbearing it doesn't do anything else and it sort of gives a, a mentality towards what the dwarves do when it comes down to it yeah it just gives that whole bit of they are so straightforward that 
We don't need anything more. They don't need flamboyant. They don't do that. They just burrow straight in, get what they need, and then burrow straight back out again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think counterpoint to that, there are definitely, like, there are probably going to be bits of their, bits of the places where they live that are elaborate. Oh, yeah. But uh, the way in which I see it for being elaborate is more along the lines of it's elaborate by design of making it more functional to do. And it's more along the lines of that it looks elaborate to everyone else, whereas to them it's almost like it is just basic function, which has turned it into this elaborate design without intending it to be an elaborate, beautiful design. It's almost like uh, seeing seeing something in nature which looks like it had to have been created. Yeah. Whereas really it's time has sort of taken it away. That's the way that I sort of see it. There's a majestic beauty to it, which they don't really understand as a beauty, but for some reason people like it and they can work around that or they've been placing down for a different idea, but they've been known to sell their places in the past, which are these great underground burrows, which have now been renovated to accent these great design which they created without even trying. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm pointing at it, which isn't here. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just over here. You can't see this. <laughs> Lovely alcoves have got over there. I put my hand down. Can I, can I poke where you're putting your hand up to? <laughs> <laughs> Here, somewhere. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It is a lot like strip mining in Minecraft. Uh, I say, it just ends up looking a lot more elaborate, even though it's not what they designed it to be. It was just because they haven't designed it to be. They just sort of followed the cracks. So it's almost like they accentuated what nature had already provided with the materials going through the cracks themselves. And they just yeah. follow it. And by following it, they end up going down curves and going down twists and making these elaborate, almost like staircases going up, which is literally just where this mineral has been creeping down. And it's such a chaotic, but yet beautiful design. Because it's the sort of design which no one would ever would ever think about doing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, um, we've also got one. I I've just placed on the map here, uh, Honeywell. Mm -hmm. As we said, that it was sort of tucked into the into the foothills of the mountains to the north. I think that's a fairly nice place for it. It gives it space from pretty much everything else. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. It, it, oh, it's not immediately God. between two of the locations. Like I think if it was if it was here, it would be between sort of Sunspire and Lawfell and and it's not. It's tucked out of the way. Yeah. Um Sorry, I just got in my head the reverse Gandalf putting you know the beginning of Rugrats. <laughs> got that little cage which goes around like the, the little just... play uh, pe playpen thing <laughs> yeah. just got an image of the reverse kind of just putting that around <laughs> it's just a little little <laughs> hobbit with an oversized screwdriver just comes out and flips the latch up <laughs> oh god do we want to if any of our artists is out there who think they could have a crack at that? Please, I want to see that picture. I want to see that little comic strip. <laughs> is, anyway, so you're saying. Is there anything we want to discuss about Nor Rock or Lycos before we finish? Those are, those are two of the islands that are off the off the uh, western coast of uh, Tamranor. Have we actually put yeah. anything down about them just yet? Nope. They exist. <clears throat> they sure uh, do exist. I... Oh boy, do they exist. They are there. I, I feel I feel considering how much we've talked about the things we do know. Yeah, about. I think 
going into two things that we really don't have, we've not really touched on at all. I think this might be a good one Maybe to sort of line up for next time. Well, I think, yeah, I think what we've said for next time, yeah, and what I would, what I would like to do for next time, Pantheon is the Pantheon. I want to have, I want to have a discussion. So, that's it for this time. Yeah, we've we've expanded on the towns. Hold on, one moment. Tony, what did you say about uh, Lycos, then? I think that's because we took the name for Lycos from a map that there that, that Tanny had drawn. I believe that's right. I do believe that's right. Um, but if there is a hint, um... oh, is that about it? What? Well, In which we'll case, come yeah. to you for the details of that off the stream. <laughs> um, and if they fit with our world, we'll put them in. Yeah. And if they don't, we shall burn them. And you. Um, and a random hair. I. So that is all for this one. <laughs> we are gonna. We're, we're gonna leave it here. With, I think we've successfully discussed a lot of towns. We've come up we with have. a lot of details. Uh, potentially with. You now have some doodles. Potentially with some more things that we can expand upon. We have doodles of of some of the towns. We have a reverse Gandalf. We we have a new NPC in reverse Gandalf. <laughs> and as well as that, the pantheon of me. Babe in my glory. Babe. Babe. Okay, so, never mind. <laughs> I think for next time... Uh, next time, I would like to discuss the Pantheon. Mm. I think we need five or six good gods. Can we go with even numbers, please? Six good six. gods. <laughs> good god. Good gods. Yeah, six. Good god, there's six of them. <laughs> and we need uh, at least two less than good gods. I'm not saying that's the entirety of the Pantheon, because I think that there is a lot of opportunity for there to be other things what are I... worshipped. I think yeah. if we go by generalisation of Pantheon, perhaps we place these ones down as the originals the, the, of the Pantheon. The creator gods, or the Exactly, prime, yeah. The prime mm -hmm. deity. The prime. Um, so, between this time and next time, at least a god each. <laughs> um, of which of us? Well, you're welcome to come back, Sean, but I think. <laughs> I think your. I assume I'm not included. Your in this particular skills are uh, architecturally related. Everything. Welcome on board, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will in we we will invite you back because there is more to discuss. Um, but yeah, I think between the the four standard members of the council and apparently also Tanny, who wants to make a god. I. We can always place this one down as well, though. If anyone in yeah. the chat wants to, uh, perhaps actually instead of going for the chat, uh, join us into our Discord. Yes, which I'm sure a link will magically appear in the chat any moment soon. I, I see. Just join us in the Discord. Sean and just, just randomly... perked up as you said this, <laughs> and then there we can always place down an, an idea of if you wish to come up with a god name, we'll have a. Place to throw the suggestion in there. Where would be a good place to throw uh, a suggestion well, we in the Discord? A, uh, we we have a uh, we have a general RPG chatter board. I will throw a thing into our general RPG chatter forum on there to place your gods. <laughs> Yep. I like the title of that. <laughs> um, and we will discuss them next time. And if if they are 
if, if they are accepted into the pantheon, we take over them and... Oh, exactly. I mean, for the time being, I, yeah. I'm a good placeholder. I, I, I've got a full covering of our cathedral. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other thing I would like to discuss next time, assuming we have the space in next time's episode, it might be that this is a thing that we do at the end of July. But mm -hmm. one, okay. of, one of the next things on the discussion list is I've started a calendar. So... I've started a calendar, and I think we should work out the details of the calendar. Yeah, it would be a good one to try and figure out how time works. So I've I've gone for a very standard, there are seven days in a week, there are four weeks in a month, and there are 12 months in a year. I... For the sake of simplicity in gameplay, and I, I generally place this one down whenever it comes down to playing pretty much any RPG I've played, and Ryan in particular, that keeping it to the calendar which everyone is already adjusted to, they understand what a day roughly would be like, they understand what an hour roughly is. Time scale and such feel should be similar, yes. or at least very close to the same vein. I mean, that's kind of why I've gone with seven days in a week, four weeks in a month, 12 months in a year. It's It gives us slightly less days in a year than we have, because obviously we have mm -hmm. months with those weird, weird amount of days that don't quite match up evenly to a calendar. True. Um, but it does also give us nice even months. It gives us the right number of months for even the days, seasons to match. How many days short would we be? Uh, let me have a quick look. I... Only because I wonder whether we could use those days as, like, days devoted to the gods in between the months. If we've got six, then every other month you gain a... day. I think we're... we're, we're it, it, it's a lot different to that. Because under our current structure, like under that structure, there are 28 days every month. Yeah, yeah. which would be 336 days a year. Thank you very much, Sean. <laughs> yeah, so we are a fair whack off. So yeah, you're about a month or so out of... So we just add an extra month then. Well, the main reason I kept it to 12 is that we have a very good idea of what a 12-month year is. This is discussion to have another time. Yeah, I was going to say... We've got this is that discussion that, we work at, that I'm saying we have the next time. As, as a basic thing at the moment, this is, this is the calendar. It's... Each, each month has 28 days, each month has four weeks, each week has seven days, um, each year has 12 months. Mm. The, the sort of seasonal cycles are roughly the same. You have three months of spring, three months of summer, three months of autumn, three months of winter. Mm-hmm. Um, and one day where it just can't fucking decide what it wants to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> one day of every damn weather imaginable. Yeah, you know, the standard. It, it rains, it snows, it's hot, it's cold. Oh, God. And then every four years, uh, you get the year of the panic moon. And in the year of the panic moon, in the seventh month, you have two days which are the festival of the panic moon. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good basis at the very least. I think we can possibly, the things we need to come up with are names for the months and names for possibly the days of the week. Hmm. Yeah. And possibly fair, if we have shifting months, if, if we want to stick to the same sort of 
month layout that people have in this world where it's some months have 30 days, some months have 31, other have 28 or 29. We can talk about this later. That That yeah. is a thing for future times, but... It, yeah. it does feel like someone should come after the gods, because usually but they also, get yeah, sort of placed like into... The... That's one of the reasons we do the Pantheon first, and then the calendar afterwards, is that, one, it allows us to put their names into the days of the week, and also the months of the year, and also we know what festivals they might be interested in. True. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a calendar. There, there, there is a calendar now. And we can start to hey. put things onto it. Um, mm. But... We, we have additional drawing. Oh, I need to uh -huh. I need to see additional drawing. I did a cut through of a tree. Ah. <laughs> ah, yes, that is a tree. Yeah. Tree. There's a tree. That's a tree. Yes with the kind of cut through yeah. the different layers i put in some more standard housing because this would be the one that maybe outsiders get bought to so gotcha, they're a bit more yeah. traditional looking houses to be a bit more like this more makes you feel acceptance. at home right yeah. there you go this is, this is what your houses look like yes oh god i'd love the, for that to be a bit like have you seen the images of the japanese british villages <laughs> mm. Where yeah. they've tried to create Britain over there because they love them touristy wise and all that side of things, and it's it's like you've got it, but it's off. I There's not, yeah. something not quite right. I kind of like the idea that like it they look like ordinary houses from a distance. When you get close, you see like the wood is actually like just like the seam where the tree meets the building yeah. is just like growing outwards mm -hmm. but yeah that that was the doodle that was continuing whilst you guys were trying fair <laughs> enough it's a good doodle uh it's a good doodle doodle just gonna just gonna close this because it keeps pinging at me every so often when it auto saves the map <laughs> uh that is all for this time thank you guys in the chat so much for watching if you are here and haven't done so already please hit that follow button. It's a great way for you guys to know we go live, a completely free way that you can support us on the channel. It allows you to know when Ben gets up to all of his craziness. Bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and when we do things like D&D &D and stuffs. Uh, we, and stuffs. And stuffs. Uh, we, do oh, have, stuffs. we do have a YouTube channel that you can head over to and... Uh, watch all of the replays of the old stuff we've done including previous sessions of the council of tamranor where we drew the map and we uh came up with the place names and we discussed the races and all of that sort of thing that we've already done um and then we also uh, go over there subscribe and ring the little bell we also have a discord which has recently Ooh. just appeared in the chat but it's also in the description underneath the video uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on Twitch. It's it's down there as well. Uh, head on over, join, and one, tell us about gods that we might want to feature in our pantheon. Uh, also, what else have we been discussing oh. today? I don't know. What have we been discussing today? Um... Uh, Seasonal FBF logos is is one That's thing true, we have yeah. been discussing yeah. today because it is it is Pride Month and unlike some other people, uh, we we do do a Pride logo every June, but it's really cool and you know we actually stand behind it and mean things with it rather than just yeah. doing it because the corporate people say it's Rainbow Logo time. Exactly. I mean, the corporate people oh. do say it's rainbow logo time, but uh... I do love our workplace. We've been given the chance. We can come in on uniform. They've recently said that we're not going to get more uniform anymore. That we use our regular clothes. How do you do um, non-uniform from a non-uniform workplace? Underpants. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um. 
head on over to the Discord and discuss Ben's Pantheon and... I thought you were going to stop a few letters short then. Ben's Pan. Yes. Uh, or seasonal Ben's FPS pants. logos. I've already, I've already seen the doodle for one FBF <laughs> seasonal logo that I asked somebody to doodle for us today. And is it just yeah, you know, is it just the FBF logo with just a Santa hat just sat on top? No, I've not I, Jaunty. I've, I've not asked yeah. for an FBF Christmas logo yet, but look forward to October, guys. When Ooh. I draw the FBF logo with a tiny Santa's <laughs> Uh Or just wait for Arbor Day, where I will make a wood. <laughs> um we also have a website, finalbossfight.co.uk, where you can go to see all of the good stuffs that we do. Uh, written content, you can find uh, profiles of the characters that we play, and all sorts of interesting things over there. Uh, Law says, I doodled you lot too. I'm concerned, you doodled that, us. I'm concerned that something just came up in the, uh, the art gallery. <laughs> oh, nice. god. oh that's adorable oh my god Set. and what are you ben, doing with the river that river back <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm currently trying like, to I'm currently trying like... to strangle Ben <laughs> it's honestly, it kind of looks like the umbilical cord, cord of the world I just love it I'm Oh, that's adorable. I, I'm Billy Connolly. You are. You are. Why did I turn into? But you are in real life as well. Why did I turn into Billy Connolly? <laughs> did Did nobody it's tell just me roll this? With it, John. Oh, just just roll with it. We were trying to give you clues, like when we gave you the stilted boots and the funny trousers. Uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, head on over to the Discord for. I love that, that. as well. That's. That stuff that's we'll not have more of in that, there. please. We'll have tons yeah. more of that, please. We love it, those. I love, cool. I actually love this. <laughs> uh, I just love the fact that you three are working quite happily on it. This <laughs> we just playing around. <laughs> oh. We have the following streams coming up as well. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to be playing D and D because it's uh, the start of the month, and the tyranny of dragons continues. Uh, last time we had a rock fall on our heads, and That's inconvenient. and Mork the Orc was not quite quick enough to get out of the way of it, and we also lost so Mork the Orc got walked. Yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, we also lost the cardboard cutout of Arturius, but that's fine because the real Arturius is returning. Um, as we continue to hunt down the cultists that attacked Green Nest. Uh, on Sunday, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage continues as the group push through uh, Skullport and try to work out what to do now that Wole has gone missing. Well, I, I think we're going to probably go and try and find them. That's not a bad shout. On Monday... On Monday night, over on the Angel Games player channel, Angel is yelling at Genshin monsters. On Tuesday night... <laughs> on, on Tuesday night, Jeff is running another episode of Brindlewood Bay. On Wednesday next week, uh, Angel is playing Honkai Star Rail, Ben is taking to the sky in Sky Children of the Light, and will probably play a game as well. <laughs> Okay, well. Yeah, we might. Uh, on what was the chance? On Thursday, Angel continues renovating villages in Minecraft, I believe. And then on Friday, uh, Jeff is back with horror on the Orient Express. Ah, <sighs> those those are the streams. What are coming up next week? Uh. Don't forget to catch them all. Don't don't forget to watch. It's quite impressive. There's going to be three at the same time, apparently. Yeah, don't forget to watch all of them, including the ones that overlap <laughs> with each other. 
<laughs> Especially those ones. And, Shops open. And if, you, and if you don't, then that means you don't love us. And why don't you love us anymore? And what Sean happened? will cry. What we... happened between us? Why, why would you do this? And on my birthday as well, you... Why? <laughs> we are now going to do a raid. Uh, we are going to do a raid. A raid we are going to do. To what's it gonna do? Starship Trooper. I don't know what it is, guys, but I, I feel like we're possibly about to raid Starship Trooper. We're gonna go raid Starship Trooper. Are they are playing the Outlast Trials. That's good book. Go give, go give Star some love. We'll see you guys again real soon. For now, so long. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.